We're ready. Thank you. Welcome to the regular meeting of Hamilton City Council, December 6th, 2023, a little after 6 o'clock. We're here in City Council Chambers, 345 High Street in Hamilton. We do have two public hearings this evening, one involving the 2024 budget, and the other one is on marijuana business operations. Um, roll call, please. Coleman. Present. Fear. Vaughn. Present. Ryan. Present. Nab. Present. Lauer. Present. Moeller. Present. We have a quorum. I'm going to take a motion to excuse Councilmember Carla Fear for reasons known to City Council. So moved. Second. Motion by Councilmember Nab. Second by Councilmember Vaughn. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Hearing none, that motion is carried. We're going to start off with offering a prayer by <clears throat> myself. Followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. Please stand if you are able. Almighty God, grant us a more peaceful world, a more peaceful manner in which we all try to work together, and peace and strength to those individuals and families in distress. Protect our public safety, first responders, and military. I'd take a moment of silence for, a, uh, for all those who have passed away recently in the city family, but also a moment of silence for an individual who came to a lot of council meetings uh, Dan Hancock, who passed away last week. Moment of silence, please. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Pledge. Oh, got the pledge. <laughs> so much to do. I pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thanks for the catch on that, man. <laughs> okay, we do have some special presentations this evening. We are swearing in two uh, of our members of council who got reelected, and I guess we'll go by, uh, it's okay with Mr. Pullman, by alphabetical order. Ladies first, how's that? I hear alphabetical order from <laughs> her. Uh, I hear, uh, <laughs> Susan Vaughn, would you like to be sworn in first? Yes, sir. Thank you. I'm not sure who is swearing you oh. in. I, Susan Vaughn. I, Susan Vaughn. Solemnly swear. Solemnly swear. That I will obey. That I will obey. The Constitution and laws. The Constitution and laws. Of the United States. Of the United States. And of the state of Ohio. And of the state of Ohio. And I will in all respects. And I will in all respects. Observe the provisions of the charter. Observe the provisions of the charter. And ordinances or resolutions. And ordinances and resolutions. Of the city of Hamilton, Ohio. Of the city of Hamilton, Ohio. And thankfully discharge. And thankfully discharge. Faithfully discharge. Faithfully discharge. <laughs> the duties. The duties. Of the office of the office of council member of council member of the city of hamilton ohio of the city of hamilton ohio congratulations thank you very much i appreciate it thank you eric pullman thank you i'm gonna invite my uh, granddaughters up here so <clears throat> oh that's great they were uh we thought we were going to have something to hold for them, but they're fine. So my granddaughters and my wife, so. All right, girls, you can stand right here, okay? I got it. Please repeat after me. I, Eric Pullman, solemnly swear. I, Eric Pullman, solemnly swear. That I will obey the Constitution. That I will obey the Constitution. And the laws of the United States. And the laws of the United States. And of the state of Ohio. And in the state of Ohio. That I will in all respect that I will in all respect observe the provisions of the charter, observe the provisions of the charter ordinances and resolutions of the city of Hamilton, Ohio, ordinances and re uh, resolutions of the city of Hamilton, Ohio, and faithfully discharge the duties, and faithfully <laughs> discharge the duties of the office of vice mayor, of the office of vice mayor of the city of Hamilton. Of the city of Hamilton. Congratulations. Thank you, Mr. Hatcher. Thank you. Thank you. Vice Mayor Pullman, would like to say a few words? Well, I did up here. 
that's fine. Um, <laughs> sorry. No, I just want to thank everybody. Um, thank everybody that supported me during the election and uh, congratulate again Susan and Carla, Carla for being back on. Um, always a great team here. I know what a my family that always comes out and supports me. We got a bunch of them out there, a slew of them. Our granddaughters who stood up there, my my uh, daughter, my son-in-law, my little grandson. I got my two sisters, uh, um, Kim and Denise and uh, Tim there, and Evan Pullman, uh, my son, and my mother is Lois Pullman, and I got my brother Jeff and my brother Alan back there. My brother Alan was going to swear me in, but he forgot to renew his license. So, it's, uh, so Mr. Hatcher got second best out of it. So sorry, but it's, uh, I want to thank everybody for doing. <laughs> thank everybody for doing that, and um, appreciate. I'm excited for the next four years. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Vaughn. Yes, sir. Also, thanks to the voters, um, I found this position over the past four years to be extremely rewarding to have the opportunity to represent the citizens of Hamilton, a place where I grew up. It's been my home forever, raised my family here, and truly call it home. So to be able to sit here today and to have the ability to listen, to meet with, uh, and represent the constituents is truly an honor, and I appreciate it. Uh, the four years went very, very fast, so I said, I think I know what I'm doing now, so I hope the next four years are gonna be even better. And thanks to my family, my husband John's here, my son Patrick, and my daughter Liz, and uh, I really appreciate it and look forward to working with this team. This is a great group. I think Hamilton's in a wonderful position right now and really, really fortunate uh, to be here where we are today. Thank you all. Welcome back. Thank you. Welcome hey. back. Glad to be back. Councilmember Carl Figure will be sworn in at a later date, we believe, on December the 13th. <clears throat> okay. Our next special presentation is a proclamation to Ed and Kathy Creighton. They are here. <coughs> to be joined by our Director of Infrastructure, Edwin Porter. Well, ladies and gentlemen, you may not know these two folks, Ed and Kathy Creighton, but they do work so much to preserve history of Hamilton, Ohio, as well as Butler County. Kathy's the executive director of the Butler County Historical Society. Ed does us all kinds of things. But they did something really special uh, a couple of weeks ago and involved um, the history of our hyd hydraulic, our local hydraulic. And Edwin Porter and his team says, we've got to give a proclamation to these folks. And it's been long overdue for you folks to get a proclamation. I'm going to let Edward Porter kind of lead us in this, and then we're going to give you a proclamation. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, so the National Hydropower Association had an international conference it hosted in Cincinnati this year. And um, so about 1,900 people from all around the world came to the Cincinnati area for this um, conference. And Hamilton being a long entity in hydropower, we were invited to be one of the host utilities of the conference, um, which really um, was an honor for us. And so as we were talking on the planning committee and we, we were talking with the National Hydropower Association about Hamilton's history, they really didn't know about the original hydraulic. And so we were talking about the industrialization of Hamilton and how water power, not even hydroelectric water power, really founded this city. And um, so we started talking more about it, and then we got in touch with the, um, the society, and they said, hey, you know what would be a really cool idea is if we have something brand new and we talk about hydro heritage. And so really out of the blue, they came up with a brand new idea that said, hey, let's talk about hydropower and the history of hydropower because of your unique story. And in just a few short weeks, the Crichtons 
put together an incredible amount of information. They had many signboards, um, they had many visual aids, and they had a whole um, display at this. And I'm telling you, every single person at the conference attended this thing. So the, the, the directors of the organization, um, a lot of folks, and so um, Ed specifically, he worked, he's retired, and he worked three days straight, standing for 10 hours a day, setting up this, um, this hydro heritage area. And then after the third day, he shut it all down, and then he came and we actually hosted um, probably around 40 people um, from all over the world at the um, Hamilton Hydro site. So um, he brought his Model T, right? Model A, sorry. Um, he brought his Model A, drove it up there, and showed that the history of our hydraulic and how Henry and Edsel Ford came and used hydroelectric power to build wheels for the Model A. And so people were just, just flabbergasted by the history and having you know, hydro for so long in Hamilton, but then also um, now you know, fast forward to the Meldal Hydro Plant, which was uh, commissioned in 2016. Um, so, so I just want to say thank you to the Crichtons for really you know, coming up with a, a brand new unique idea. When you have people that are you know, titans in the industry in hydropower and you, you bring up something brand new and you bring up an idea, and you know, implement something like that. And now they're going to do every single year at this uh, conference, they're going to do the Hydro Heritage and it's because of your guys' efforts. So fantastic job by both of you. Thank you so much for representing us so well. Edwin, I think the word Titan is so appropriate because these folks are titans of history around here. So I'm gonna read this proclamation. I would have run out of paper if I listed everything that you folks have done. But this basically uh, mentions a lot about the hydro, but there's another paragraph in there. Office of the Mayor, a proclamation. Whereas Hamilton City Council, Hamilton's Infrastructure Department, and the City of Hamilton would like to recognize Ed and Kathy Creighton for their passion for Hamilton and Butler County's history, especially the history of the Hamilton hydraulic, Hydroelectric Plant. Whereas Ed and Kathy assisted with research on the history of the Hamilton Hydro Plant, from the area being used as a prehistoric native village, so it's a prehistoric native village originally, uh, to the Hamilton Hydraulic of the 19th century, to the present hydroelectric plant built by Henry Ford in 1918. And whereas the Cranes provided subject matter experts, speakers, and artifacts for the National Hydropower Association tour, including their personal <coughs> Ford Model A alley built with parts made in Ford's Hamilton plant. And whereas they also participated in the National Hydropower Association area with a booth to tell a story of the history of water power in Butler County. And whereas Ed and Kathy, who is the executive director of Butler County Historical Society, have put their knowledge, expertise, and historical research into many other projects, including their speakers program, antique car conferences, historical holiday programs, Butler County Veterans Database, displays about Hamilton's manufacturing history, assisting with placing additional names on the Butler County Veterans Memorial Wall, being caretakers of the ben Benninghoffen House, USA 250 in 2026, and many other special events. Therefore, I, Pat Moeller, Mayor of the City of Hamilton, Ohio, and members of Hamilton City Council, to hereby recognize Ed and Kathy Creighton for their passion and volunteering efforts in sharing the history of water power in Butler County and their tremendous contributions to preserving and teaching the history of Hamilton and Butler County. <coughs> Some of myself as mayor, acknowledged by all members of council. So I'm going to give this to Ed. I give that to you. Okay. So now we can hear Kathy speak. <laughs> <laughs> and then we'll switch. I didn't plan on speaking tonight. Sure. Mm -hmm. um, this hydraulic convention was something very special for us. When we first got involved with it, we had no idea it was the international convention. And when the bus and the people got off at the hydraulic the Ford plant. It was something magical to share the history of Hamilton, the history of the hydraulic, the prehistoric uh, Ford ancient village that actually is there on Campbell Island, talk about it. Uh, it was a very special moment for these people and for us. And now Hamilton is, and the hydraulic story has gone international. Um, so it was a very good experience for us. But I'll let my husband, he's the one that did the majority of the work, and I can just tell you that, and he's gonna kill me for saying this, I had the first call the first night 
when he was down at the Duke Energy Center doing this, and I said, well, how's things going? He says, oh, it's just horrible. He says, I'm not talking to anybody, nothing. But he says, they just serve steak for lunch. <laughs> then I get this call about 20 minutes later. Then it's Grater's ice cream. And then he says, I think by the time this was over with, he thinks he talked to over 2,000 people. OK. <laughs> switch. OK. <laughs> All right. Well, I just think it's a great honor to be here and Eric get this proclamation. Uh, Henry Ford was a big part of this area. Uh, he started out in Cincinnati building, he built Model T's downtown Cincinnati, came up here, started building tractors. Model T started catching on, he needed more parts, so he did it here. So actually, over 300 different parts for Fords all the way up to 1950 were made right here in Hamilton. A lot of people don't know that. And I'll just give you one other piece of history. Henry Ford bought the hydraulics up here, both on the Rossville side and the Hamilton side. And the stocks were, there was like 486 stocks. Well, Etzel, his son, got one share, and he was president of the hydraulics. Henry Ford got the, all the rest of the stock. So it was just kind of interesting that that's how it turned out. But. Uh, but it was a great honor, and Hamilton has a great uh, landmark over there. Like I said, that you know this is hydraulics, when we, electricity. Henry Ford liked to have uh, all the power under his control. We also had Hoovens, Owens, and Rensselaer, who made big power plants for other places. So Hamilton's got a lot of good history, and I thank you for the award. What's your T-shirt say? Got history. Ford does. Yeah. <laughs> a round of applause for two very tremendous people. Thank you. us to um, the audience of citizens. Individuals who wish to make comments may speak during this part of the agenda or may reserve the right to speak specifically when that item is up for a vote on the council floor. Each speaker is allowed five minutes. We use this public speaking book just to, to keep track and according to our rules of council to uh, make sure we've got people who signed up to speak. Scott Meister, we have you as the first person to speak. Want to come up? Give yes. us your name. Scott Meister. Address. Uh, I had my address changed because my house is on Bender now. Okay. Well, it's been sitting on Bender, but I had to park my address. So there was a problem with the fence, so I had to change the address to 2220 Bender Avenue. I had to go to the construction company for that, but uh, they changed it. But um, I talked to AJ and. They want me to pay $200. I mean, I already paid $1,300 in property tax. I own my own property. I don't think I should have to pay $200 to have, uh, put my fence up. I've had one up for nine years. Nobody made a big deal until I, I got a half acre until I moved it out. And, and he said that you guys enforced that law, and he's the enforcer. So I, I just, you know. They want me to bring the fence 20 feet, ba 20 feet back. I got 11 feet away from the road. And the posts are six by sixes. They're not four by fours. I put each one in, my, in the ground myself with an auger. And that's, that's a lot of work. Well, I, you've got to follow the procedure. <clears throat> and apparently you did talk to AJ, is that correct? Yeah. Is this the last time you were here? Yeah. The last meeting I think it was. I talked to Miss Hagen over there too. Okay. We had a little meeting on the phone, all of us. Right. And did you get your questions answered? No. You didn't get no. your questions answered? No, but they want me to move my fence back. And I don't, I don't think that's right. I own, I own that property. I shouldn't have to move it 20 feet back. That's a lot of moving. 
Sounds like it could be a potential legal matter, or maybe you well, should I seek representation. Don't you guys recount it? I mean, you guys voted in three years ago. I got a lot of people who say that they'll sign a petition, and, and I can bring the signatures up here. There's a procedure for that as well. Okay. And do that at the drop of a hat at a council meeting. It does not not does not work that way, Scott. I understand. So uh, if you want to find out how you can possibly present legislation to us, do that. If you want to hire legal counsel, do that. But I know our city folks have been responsive, and I know they have tried I've had to had a lot of people questions. come up to my property says says a nice-looking house and nice-looking fence. I, I use six by sixes because four by fours twist. Well, thank thank you for for making improving the appearance. Well, of the yeah, house. I'm trying to improve my property, but you know, I pay the property tax. If I don't pay property tax, you guys come and get my property. So, pretty much, you just pay for something you don't own. That's not the city who who, who enforces real estate taxes, yeah. okay? Yeah. But we've got a procedure. There's been passage of, of ordinances on how to do things, how to follow through with zoning and permits and all that kind of kind of stuff so many laws so many regulations for on everything no idea you yeah. know let's just say if you want to go back to the folks you talked to you might get some additional answers to your questions but for i'm now, just trying to keep people off my property from stealing my stuff i understand I understand you, you got to take action when you when you see see an issue yeah. okay all right thanks thanks scott Okay, we now go to the consent agenda. That includes all staff reports, all caucus reports, all meeting minutes, an information report, which is our October financial report, an information report, our October investment <coughs> report. We're going to go to the committee of the whole. What that is, it's a uh, time in the agenda when it allows council to ask questions, provide direction, or comment on various reports. So we're going to go to the committee of the whole. I'll accept the motion that the regular meeting be recessed and that committee will take place. So moved. Second. Motion made by Vice Mayor Pullman, seconded by Council Member Knapp. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Hearing none, that motion is carried at 626. <clears throat> so you lead us in the uh, committee of the whole, please. Opposite Absolutely. Agenda. So the first presentation will be from our uh, planning director, Miss Liz Hayden. Good evening, City Council and residents of Hamilton. We have two items coming from Planning Commission tonight. The first is a conditional use request with two variances for 1751 and 1755 Grand Boulevard. This is at the intersection of Grand and Schuler. And this was originally a project that was the, the person who bought it was proposing four dwelling units and they've been working with us to come up with a alternative plan um, for that. It's a storefront building that was meant to have commercial um, and also um, the density, the number of units did not, was not aligned with what the underlying zoning allowed. So that's where you see the two variances. The, they still need a variance for the density with two units um, but it's a significantly less than what was um, requested originally. Um, the proposal includes some facade improvements and they are proposing a <coughs> dwelling unit on the second floor and a dwelling unit on the first floor in the cor on the corner, but the white building would be a storefront. So that was their compromise that they proposed was that half of the front of the building would be a storefront. Um, but then they wanted to use the other part as residential. So that's what they're proposing. And Planning Commission m made mention in their approval that they were com they felt comfortable approving this proposal for a number of reasons, but one of them being the applicant provided a lot of before and after photos of properties that he's renovated throughout greater Cincinnati that were very nice improvements and that's why they thought they felt comfortable with moving this forward do you have any questions on this project any questions you 
The second is another round of zoning text amendments. It's a, just a handful of things this time, but the first is regarding clinics, hospitals, and nursing homes and inpatient rehabilitation facilities. We had a couple projects call and ask us for information about zoning over the past six months, and we realized that we needed to modernize our regulations related to these, and also are proposing to make some of, in some zoning districts, these types of uses, especially small clinics, are per just permitted outright. And we are proposing to change that to make these kinds of uses conditional uses just because we have gotten a lot of calls about complex different uses and we felt that it was a good idea to be able to look at these on a more case-by-case -case basis. Then the second one is something that we've talked about um, at City Council before we had a resident come to Council at, um, talking about the zoning regulations regarding campers in that we had sent a zoning violation, uh, I think it was on Westview, about a camper that needed to be moved. So we did research other communities' regulations and are proposing an update what we found was a lot, the, the regulations on trailers, RVs, campers really are all over the place and there isn't a standard best practice and, and it's so different based on the type of community. But one thing we saw that was relatively consistent was that our current rule says that they, you can only have a camper on your property if it's 25 feet or shorter, and we're proposing to change that to 31 feet or shorter. The one thing I do want to note is that we are, this current proposal does not recommend changing that you can park it in your front in your front driveway. So that is something that in this case, the regulations that you're getting proposed tonight do not resolve the issue of where that is parked on his property. There's been discussions about, he has other possible opportunities of access to park it in his rear yard if it's on a paved surface, and this would this would meet his, his, uh, his camper is uh, 30 feet long. So we would work with him, but I wanted to be clear that there would still be an issue with the, the person who came to council, but we think that this is a good update for what modern campers look like. And then the final one is a amendment to our sign regulations. We overhauled our signage regulations about a year or two ago, and we've found, we keep running into that our projecting sign regulations just don't allow, don't contemplate all kinds of scenarios for different signage. Um, for example, the Rossville Flats had a, a sign that just wasn't contemplated in how we, we, it was envisioned that they'd be really small, like small little boutiques would have small signs projecting off their buildings. Well, we needed to, to widen that to fit different scenarios. So that's what you're seeing tonight. Any questions on these? Thank you. Okay, uh, for agenda items three and four, I will be covering those items. Uh, good evening, uh, Daniel Tidyman, City Clerk. Uh, I have two uh, short items uh, for Council's review tonight. Uh, first is a reappointing a resident member to the Ordinance Review Commission. Uh, the Ordinance Review Commission, uh, as a commission reviews proposed ordinances that have a significant impact on quality of life, it provides an extra opportunity for uh, the city administration, members of council, and the public to review these ordinances before they go to city council. The commission is made up of nine members, two of them being resident members who have terms that expire next, uh, this year. Uh, Christina Lada Landefeld is interested in being reappointed for a new term starting. I don't know what's wrong with those dates. Anyway, those for next year. If council is interested in a resolution, it will be presented next week uh, at our next council meeting. And then for agenda item number four, uh, this is related to our uh, this is related to our uh, regular meeting dates for next year. We do this as a resolution at the end of every year. Uh, per our charter, we have regular meetings on every second and fourth Wednesday of each month with the exception of one meeting in July to provide for a recess in the summer for council. 
as well as meetings on the second and third Wednesdays in November and the first and second Wednesdays of December. Uh, do we have any questions on these items? <clears throat> Daniel, yes. I was just going to say, did you say the dates would be corrected on yeah, I, Christina's was, appointment? Oh, yes. Yeah, so. there was something with this formatting with, within yeah. the uh, pr presentation. But okay. as I was drafting the resolution today, it's yeah. definitely corrected. Perfect. Thank you. Sure. And one last thing I will mention is that um, uh, Mr. Acuff, who is our other resident member, he unfortunately uh, mentioned to me that he cannot continue to serve on the commission. So we will start uh, we'll start posting on our various platforms to try to fill that vacancy very soon. Uh, do we have any questions before I step away? Okay. okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. Uh, coming up for agenda items five through seven, we'll have our finance director, Mr. Dave Jones. Uh, good evening, Mayor, members of Council, citizens of Hamilton. With the clicker. Uh, one minute. There you go. Thank you. So, caucus report five. Hang on. I'll, let me fix it. That's number seven. Five is the income tax. Did you do them different? That's, no? that's there. Hold up. <laughs> yeah. So this caucus report is about amending our income tax ordinances. So House Bill 33, which is the state's operating budget that was effective in July, uh, had a section in there that was requiring municipalities to amend their income tax ordinances. And I've highlighted the top four bullet points that I'll go through. So beginning with tax year 2024, uh, income of individuals under 18 years of age is going to be exempt from uh, municipal income tax. And I'll try to maybe get to a dollar amount. It's going to be hard because we don't do birth dates with taxes. But when I get to the end of it, maybe we can assign a dollar amount because I think that'll be at the top of everybody's mind. Uh, the next one on net profit allocation, I'm going to give you an example because I think that's going to be a lot easier to understand than the way it reads up there. So if you have the ABC company operating in Hamilton and the Hamilton city limits, they're subject to a 2% tax on their profits. And if they have John Doe, remote worker that lives in the township and he's working from home in the township, he would not be subject to the 2% withholding tax. However, what this does, it allows the company to allocate his wage expense back against the net profit, reducing their net profit, thereby it's going to reduce the tax we collect from that company. Uh, those two have a money component to it. The next two don't really. Uh, the third bullet point at the top there, it just extends the time from six months to seven months. So it adds an extra month to an extension. If you know anybody files an extension, an extension only extends the time to file your tax return, you still have to pay the money on time. And the last one's about penalties. Uh, it caps the maximum at $25 versus $150. We're pretty forgiving with penalties anyway, so I don't see that being a big one. You know, if you go back to these two, uh, you maybe look at the, the, the tax for somebody, maybe 16 and 17 year olds. If you think $5 million produces 100,000 in tax, is it possible we have 500 16 and 17 year olds making $10,000 on average? You know, it seems a little high to me. Uh, but, you know, now you've got, uh, you know, fast food restaurants paying $14, $15 an hour. So it's plausible. Uh, and bullet point two, if you add that one in, I, I think you could maybe be 100,000 less. You know, it's, it's a very rough estimate because we don't have data on, you know, birth dates with tax returns or anything like that. And bullet point two is brand new. Any questions on that one? Questions? <clears throat> Thank you. You're welcome. Do what? Yeah. So this one's an internal note, and we do this one usually every year. So as part of each year's street resurfacing program for the, uh, the special assessments fund, 
provides the initial funding for the concrete repairs to a homeowner's sidewalk and driveway aprons. And if you remember back when we passed the street levy, we took all the curbs out of that. So these notes are going down. Uh, and the special assessment fund, they get their initial funding from the central benefits fund via a cash advance. So we did a cash advance from our central benefits fund to our special assessments fund in 2022. Uh, state, auditor, state auditor prescribes that this has to be paid by, uh, paid back, the cash advance has to be paid back by the end of the year. So to repay the advance, we issue a five-year internal note between the two fund. It's a general obligation note at 5% interest rate, uh, and the revenue collected from the, foam, from the homeowners who had the concrete repairs assessed or the real estate taxes is pledged on repayment for that note. The obvious benefits, we get to pay interest to ourselves on that. Any questions on that one? And then the final supplemental. <laughs> Thank you. So this is the final supple appropriation of 2023. Uh, and I'll tie this in when we get to the public hearing on the budget presentation. I'll be able to tie some of this in when we look at year end balances also. But bullet point one, we have $2.3 million transfer to the fire station 26 construction fund. Uh, obviously that's for construction of that station, station 26. We transferred $4 million of ARPA money into that fund. We spent a little of that down, but I think we bid that two or three times. Bids came in a lot higher than what we expected. So we're proposing an additional 2.3 being transferred. We're also transferring a million dollars to the Hamilton Capital Improvement and Debt Fund. That's to pay off a note uh, with US Bank that dates back to 2018. We loaned the CIC some money. The CIC in turn loaned it to the core for renovations on the Davis building. Uh, we've been very fortunate with the interest rate. It's an interest only note and the core fund's been paying the interest. Right now it's a 0.9%. I've talked to US Bank a couple of times. If we go back out in May of 24, I doubt I'm gonna get anything below 5%. Uh, so we're just, we're gonna pay it off. Now we still too, we, we will retain that note with the CIC and they're you know, still hopefully get our money back or should get our money back. Uh, We've got $1.1 million for the concrete repair and resurfacing uh, project. It's a grant from OPWC, the Ohio Public Works Commission. It's for the Fairway Hills uh, water main project going on up there. The next two are actually reductions. Uh, we had originally budgeted the, uh, the water tower at Enterprise Park in the 2023 amended budget. We have that in the 2024 proposed budget now, so we're gonna reduce the, the water fund budget on that one and the 1.78 million for the new London packaging plant, same thing that was in the 2023 budget. Uh, construction is gonna start at 24, so that is in the 2024 proposed budget. Any questions on the final supplemental? Questions? Thank you. Thank you. And our last presentation will be by our city manager, Mr. Joshua Smith. Thank you, um, Mayor and Council. Uh, this last um, item on the caucus agenda is relative to 80 acres, which is a tenant in the building that we're sitting in right now on the seventh floor. Uh, they have asked us if they could freeze their base rent for the next three years and then add an additional three years to the lease. So the lease was um, originally, to, originally set to expire in 2030. So you can see the proposal is on the screen that would add um, three more years. So we would get the increased amount. We would just delay it by three years, but capture it on the back end of the agreement. Uh, so 80 Acres has their world headquarters, their office headquarters on the seventh floor of this building. Um, in addition to the rent that they pay for this space, they also cover their uh, taxes and they cover their insurance on that space. Since uh, as a government, we are not taxed, but they are a private use. They do have to pay a property tax. So they, they cover the property tax on top of the, the rent and they also cover their insurance costs. Uh, it's, a, it's been a tough year for vertical farms across the United States. I believe four have gone out of business this year alone. I think there are three large ones left, 80 acres being one of them in the United States or North America. Uh, we're just trying to help them out. But again, we will get the money. All we're asking council to do is to 
uh, push the larger part of the of the rent to the back end of the contract. So that is what you see by adding those three additional years. I'd be happy to answer any direct questions. Any questions? Thank you for working with them. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Mayor, um, if I may, um, I don't have a formal presentation, um, but we do have uh, two agenda items um, for Council's consideration uh, this evening related to adult use cannabis. Um, and I um, had some conversations uh, with some members of Council about whether or not uh, there was a possibility to revise uh, what is uh, on the agenda uh, to limit it to a particular period of time. As you recall, at our last council meeting, we said we would do a prohibition with the understanding um, that we would revisit it uh, at a later date, but not put a time frame. Um, and so there is the possibility of inserting a date if that is the um, the pleasure of council, um, because you know we'll have to get to the reading of that matter um, momentarily. I want to just bring it up uh, at this juncture um, so that uh, before we got to that, we could already have um, tweaked you know what we want that language to look like uh, for council's consideration. So I just wanted to to pose that question at whether or not council wanted um, to see that um, language for a period of time. I've, I've looked at periods of, of three, six, uh, nine, and, and 12 months uh, as possibility dates in, depending on the direction of, of council. So um, just wanted to, to bring that up to ask whether or not there's any direction um, on that as we sit here today trying to make a decision on this important issue. So. There could be a vote for a prohibition with a set date at a later time. We could do, we could do it this very evening. Um, well, to do that right now, there is no date um, on what is for council for consideration. Say you set it six months from today. What are our options on that six month date? we would have to come back to consider that uh, matter and vote to decide whether or not we want to allow, prohibit, or limit. Well, on that date, for example, six months from today, could we vote on that date to continue the prohibition? We could. That's correct. On that date, could we um, establish a possible framework We the could. City of Hamilton? We could. What else could we do on that particular date? In the prohibition, do some kind of a framework. What could we do in between, if anything? We could, we could decide we want to lift the prohibition. Uh, we can decide we want to continue with the prohibition, or we can decide we want to limit uh, and put some you know, parameters uh, on what those limitations are, meaning we want to have two dispensaries uh, versus none, or we want to have two cultivators as, as examples. So it, it's almost like we're just bringing forward six months to make a decision after what we maybe see <clears throat> other cities are doing, uh, other other type of activities being done by all around the state of Ohio. That is a possibility. I just wanted to make sure that that was you know clear um, that that's a possibility for consideration. Is there any direction from council on that matter? Madam Law Director, um, so um, a lot to consider, and I'm not one to follow what other people are necessarily doing. I think the complication in this is uh, the regulations have yet to be determined at the state level. And so by moving forward, I I'm not even sure what we're moving forward into. The voters have spoken, the voters have voted to allow the use of uh, marijuana, cannabis, the growing, and so forth. So I personally believe we should honor that. But putting some type of a limitation on, um, I don't know, it's not limiting the state. The state came out with some possible, possible regulations just this afternoon, changes that they're going to potentially make in legislation that's been voted on in the state of Ohio and now they want to change it. So I think there are many unknowns right now. 
So you know, I'm certainly inclined to believe that three months, six months, uh, we don't know when that's going to be. But if we were to say three months, could we come back at that time and continue the prohibition? Absolutely. And there is nothing, with what is on um, the agenda right now, it is not prohibiting council to do that, even if you don't put a time frame in it. Um, mm -hmm. So it's just the pleasure about whether or not council wants to put a time frame that will require action of city council or whether or not we want to leave it as is with the assumption that we revisit it. Just to be clear, the Planning Commission, when they um, had a discussion about it, said they would like to consider uh, this in approximately six months. Uh, and so there is an understanding that we will revisit this um, within uh, you know, the next six month time frame. Now, in my mind, this is like, we gotta go slowly through uncharted waters because these are mm -hmm. uncharted waters. So I have other questions on council. Mayor, I'll throw it now. As, as uh, Councilwoman Vaughn shared with everyone, 17 of 18 precincts in the city of Hamilton voted for passage of recreation use <coughs> of marijuana. We respect that. Uh, we also believe that there's a business plan that should be put in place. And right now, that business plan that we've heard this afternoon from the state of Ohio is still very fluid, and no decisions have been made. We understand that there will be legislation for dispensaries of, of recreational use. Uh, the condition that uh, there are current medicinal uh, dispensaries throughout the state, uh, those might become dispensaries for recreational use as well. But again, it's all very, very fluid. Uh, and as the mayor said, uh, I, we, we have been successful in Hamilton because of our business plan and because we have run the city uh, on purpose in, in a, with design. So I'm in favor of, of looking at options when we talk three, six, nine, 12 months, whatever that may be, and I'm certainly open to do that. But I, I think it's important for council uh, to take our time. <clears throat> and as you said, Mayor, uh, we're in uncharted waters here. Uh, the vote was, was clearly passed a month ago. And, and for us to be able to enact something <clears throat> tonight uh, in, in, in Dot the, dot the line that, that says we will enact something I think is, is, is premature. I would rather look at this for a short period of time and come up with a plan that, that's consistent with the voters in the passage of this legislation. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, um, I, I don't think we need to put a timeline on this. I think what's being proposed, I think we can work through that this evening. I, I actually would prefer to, to save some of my additional comments right before we vote, but I don't think we need to be putting a timeline in the legislation um, strictly because we need to wait until the state hands down some additional guidance and um, re regulation so we can get a better grasp of what we can do to make this work. So putting a timeline on this, I, I don't think that's that's right because I mean, what happens if we say, you know, six months? Well, we're going to come back here in six months and have the same conversation if the state hasn't handed anything down. So, I, I don't think we should be putting a timeline on the legislation that we have proposed in front of us this evening. Mr. Mayor, Vice Mayor Pullman. You know, I agree with the, everybody here that first of all, the issue did pass, and I have nothing. You know, I, I agree with the system how it works there. Um, the problem is, is we've been kind of thrown in to make a decision by December 7th, tomorrow, to you know what we're going to do with these dispensaries. Um, I, I, I do not agree with having a timeline at all. I think no matter what, if we sit there and prohibit it now and we have no timeline on it, we have any options at any time of the year to change that, correct? I mean, we can, we can change that ordinance down the road and it doesn't matter if it's two months down the road a year down the road whatever that's correct um we're not we're not trying to hurt the people that are you know it passed i agree with that you know but a good business decision is going to be when i was in business i never made rash de decisions on you know if i'm going to do a project i i, I want to make a plan we need a plan for this and I, I don't think any timeline really helps us at all so um I, I said, let's just stay with what we're doing. We're going to prohibit it. And it's, um, we have all kind of options. And let's get all the rules in place first. You know, Ohio still hasn't made up their mind, like everybody said. And I'm all for just, you know, just staying on track what we were going to do. And um, 
let's let's work through this. Let's get a good game plan going. Mr. Mayor. House Member Lauer. Um, <clears throat> I do believe that, that it is important to put a timeline on this. Um, there are limited licenses coming out, um, and I would like to be ahead of this as we work through this. Um, I would like to see us work as quickly as possible, understanding that we may be able to change, um, adjust a timeline to maybe possibly later. Am I correct in saying that, Ms. Block? I, either way, you know, whether we put a time frame in it or we don't, we have the option to, to revisit. I think it is important to put a timeline on it because our voters have spoken. And at the end of the day, when um, licenses are handed out, I do not want to be on the short end as that's what our, that's what our um, community members have voted for. So I would like to see us put some type of timeline sooner than later. Mr. Mayor. House Mayor Vaughn. And as we move forward, we have a process in the city. So we have the Ordinance Review Commission, where um, I would hope that individuals who have interest in having a business and so forth could come present to the commission and then bring something more thoughtful to council to vote on. Uh, this isn't just a yes or no answer, I don't believe. It's not just an, a yes or no answer. So I hope that everyone understands there's a lot more to this. But um, just saying outright no, I believe, goes against what our voters have asked for. Just so I'm clear, prohibition with a mandatory date to come back and discuss, or a prohibition with no mandatory date to come back and discuss. We can revisit this That's at a correct. later time. That, that is correct. The, if you do the former, it mandates you know action at a particular time. So that is the difference. Is 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 the latter does not require you to come back and revisit it. And if we put a date on it, uh, it compels a requirement to to come back and make a vote at a particular time. Mr. Mayor, Vice Mayor Pullman. The other thing is really, I, I don't think we're going to sit on this anyway. If we um, ha if we don't have a timeline. I think it's very important that we move on this right away. I think we all know the urgency of this. So I really don't, again, I don't see why we need a timeline. I, I feel that personally, I want to, as uh, Councilman Lauer said, I want to get ahead of this. I've always been wanting to get ahead of this. And to sit there, I don't think that, you know, putting the timeline on it is going to make us move any faster. I think we're going to move fast on this anyway. I really believe this is what council wants and what the city wants. We need to figure this out quick. So, again, another comment about that. I just, I don't think we're going to drag our feet on this. Mr. Mayor. House Member Lauer. I believe that, um, and I respect your opinion, I, I believe that it is important that um, our community members understand that we are going to, move on this quickly. I believe we are going to move quickly on this as well, mm -hmm. but I think it would help um, just to keep our um, community members informed as we go um, so that we do hold this to a timeline so that we can check back on this and review this in public and um, continue our discussions. I, I think there's many things to consider. Um, most importantly, I think <coughs> Uh, one of the things to consider is I, I think we need to do to do a study on what kind of revenue this is going to generate for our city, um, especially for our utilities. We're in a unique situation as we own our own utilities, and I would really like to know how much revenue this is going to bring in to us. And I'm not sure about this one, Ms. Block, and maybe you can help me answer this. Um, are we able? Are we able to? Um, dictate where the revenues go for certain things. My opinion is I would like to see our the revenue from anything if we pass this. Um, I would like to see it go to uh, public safety. Um, as our city continues to grow, we need to meet those needs. That's another topic, but I'd like to know that answer. Um, but that's, I think it's important to keep us on a timeline so that our community is updated and informed. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Ryan. Councilman Lauer, I'm not really respectful of what you said, but I, I really do. 
but if if we allow this to go in with no clear direction from the state um, that that could really open up the cities to some very dangerous situations that um, we're gonna have to come back here and and and, and manage again so that's why I I think it is imperative that we wait until the the state Senate and the House of Representatives hand down a decision they are still um, actually I, I think they're they just called to go home tonight if I'm if I'm not mistaken um, and they are going to be voting again tomorrow so so things are very fluid up there so I would hate to go through with something just to start all over again and um, I think it would just be a good idea that we just wait until the state of Ohio gets their act together it's this taken care of so that we know exactly what we need to do to make this work here. I'm going to say a couple of things. I, there were a lot of moving parts, it seems like, and they're going to be moving many months mm -hmm. down the road a ways. I want to make one thing really clear. In my mind, there are two separate matters involved with issue two. That was passed by Ohio voters. One's recreational use of marijuana. And the other is the business of marijuana. Tonight we are considering uh, prohibiting dispensaries, possibly with a timeline, uh, prohibiting the timeline possibly the manufacturing operations, the non-home cultivation of marijuana in Hamilton. But council action will not, does not affect recreational use of marijuana right. in the city of Hamilton. If council does prohibit what I'm gonna call the business end of marijuana, we can at a later time, we've talked about that, create a proper environment uh, or no environment for the business end of marijuana. Uh, a lot of things can be looked at in relation to <coughs> location to schools, parks, churches, hours of operation, all kind of different types of terms and, and all in this. I think it's important that, that we do kind of observe, obviously, listen to what the legislature is doing up in Columbus, as well as see what other cities are doing. I mean, I like I said, about uncharted waters, going slow through them, doing what's right for the citizens of Hamilton, Ohio. My view. Okay. Any other comments or questions at this point in time? Any other direction? I mean, this is this is, committee. The whole is about direction and, and questions. That's what this is all about. Do you is want to give us any more? Um, no, Mr. Mayor. I um, I'll just share with you in looking at other communities um, throughout the state in terms of the periods of time uh, limits. The shortest time period I've seen is is six months. Um, the uh, I've seen a number of nine month uh, limits and also um, 360 days. And so um, we will proceed uh, with what's on the agenda. Um, I will send to uh, Mr. City Clerk uh, a version of an ordinance that has, you know, dates with, you know, three to 12 months. And if, if it's council's pleasure when we get to those items, if you want to make a different decision, uh, we can go from there. There's nothing else. Um, I have the motion that the committee to hold me close. So moved. Second. Motion member council member Nab, seconded by council member <clears throat> Ryan. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Post same sign. Hearing none, that motion is carried at 702. I'll accept the motion that the regular meeting be reconvened. So moved. Second. Motion by Council Member Ryan, seconded by Vice Mayor Pullman. Roll call vote on that motion, please. Pullman? Yes. Vaughn? Yes. Ryan? Yes. Nab? Yes. Lauer? Yes. Moeller? Yes. Motion adopted, 6 0. That was adopted at 702. I'll set the motion regarding uh, the items on that agenda. Mr. Mayor. Vice Mayor Pullman. Make a motion that with the exception of the items so noted, council receive the reports of the consent agenda and concur on the recommendations. Second. Motion by Vice Mayor Pullman, second by Council Member Vaughn. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. That motion is carried. <clears throat> now go to the public hearing section of the agenda. Now, the motion at the regular meeting be recessed and the public hearings take place. So moved. Second. Motion by Council Member Vaughn. Second by Council Member Ryan. Uh, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Hearing none, that motion is carried at 7.03. Mr. City Clerk, if you would please read into the record the public hearing topic. 
A public hearing regarding the 2024 Budget and Appropriations Ordinance. The only audience which should be heard at the public hearing. Anyone in the audience who should be heard at this public hearing? Thank you. Wish to be heard at this public hearing, Mr. Jones? Uh, well, I'll give the presentation if you don't mind. Sounds good to me. Let's ask for comment after the presentation and not just before the presentation. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the 2024 uh, All Funds uh, Appropriation Ordinance. Uh, I'm going to present the general fund uh, and the general fund capital and debt uh, portion. Adam Helms is going to come up and present some exciting changes at the River's Edge Amphitheater. And then Evelyn Porter is going to dig into the infrastructure side. Thank you. So this uh, is our GFOA Triple Crown. And it is not a, a misspelling of the acronym. It used to be the CAFR. It is now the Annual Comprehensive Financial Report. So it is the ACFR. We've got nine consecutive uh, awards with that. And we've also been awarded the 2023 uh, GFOA Distinguished Budget Award, uh, and that is the Government Finance Officers Association. So the takeaways from tonight is our income taxes, public safety, infrastructure, and River's Edge. So 2023 income tax all funds compared to 2022 through October is up 10.4% or 3.2 million. And the projected tax for the entire year is 37.5 million. And when I say all funds, remember the general fund gets 77.5%. There's a public safety and health fund that gets 12.5%. It's a lot easier to remember. General fund gets 90%. Our Hamilton Cap and Debt Fund, Hamilton Capital Improvement and Debt Fund gets 10%. Uh, the 2024 proposed budget for income tax revenue is at 35 million. We've stayed very conservative. We always try to stay care very conservative. Taxpayer money, it's very important. We don't over-appropriate the money. Uh, let's see here. The general fund is structurally balanced again. Current year revenues equal current year expenses. Budgeted revenues and expenditures are up 6.45% over the 2023 adopted budget. Uh, that includes $1.6 million to public safety. It was $750,000 for police, $860,000 for fire. Fire does include $100,000 for improvements at Station 21. Um, the next big increase, uh, you know, we worked very closely with, with Edwin and Christine Carr Business Services, trying to look this as a more of a holistic budget. So we're taking general fund dollars and we're going to transfer them to the infrastructure renewal fund, almost $860,000 for uh, street paving and infrastructure improvements. And then uh, we've got a proposed increase of $485,000 for River's Edge. The proposed all fund city budget is over $383 million. It's up 6.5% or over $23 million from the 2023 adopted. The uh, general fund portion of that is around three and a half million. And then when you see Edwin's slides, you'll start seeing uh, some of the bigger increases in, in the infrastructure side of things. Uh, general fund highlights, and I know that graph is hard to see, at least hard for me to see. That's the revenue highlights. Um, the top three revenue items, same as they have been for the last few years, income taxes, reimbursements from the levy funds and reimbursements for the four utilities. Like I said, we tried to work very closely with infrastructure and, and you know, here in Hamilton, we have what we call chargebacks. It's really shared services. So the finance department, we're doing payroll, we're doing accounts payable, we're doing receivables for the entire city. So we're split among five major funds, but we were able to keep those chargebacks across all four funds at 1.91% increase over 2023. Uh, income tax, like I said, income tax has been a great story here in Hamilton. The, the bar graph keeps going up. It's been going up for a number of years prior to that. Uh, we stay conservative, conservative in 24, but I sure hope to see that be up around 38 million. Uh, this is the expense side of the general fund, public safety. Like I said, it's up $1.6 million. 
public safety accounts for over 65 percent of the general fund and that is that is the lion's share of it all other departments stayed relatively the same within the general fund uh, so this is the general fund highlights and it's the unencumbered fund balance and so like i said i'm going to tie this into the final supplemental so if you remember i said we had 2.3 million dollars that's 100 percent general fund going to the fire station construction fund and the $1 million being transferred out for that internal note. That's 100% general fund. We'll make those transfers in December. That $8.9 million, that is the, the ending unencumbered estimated balance after those transfers are made. Uh, the general fund unencumbered balance, the blue is the actual general fund. The orange is our budget stabilization fund. Our budget stabilization fund is at $1.2 million. Uh, I think the total, and let me get to that in my notes, I cannot see it, is $10.1 million. You can see the decline there. That was uh, what I call an investment for the Crawford Hoyne investment at the Cohen site. Uh, it's actually a forgivable <coughs> loan, but hopefully that pays dividends for years to come to the city. Uh, the Hamilton cap and debt fund. So I said the general fund's getting 90% of your taxes. The uh, cap and debt fund gets 10%. So the cap and debt fund at 35 million, we're estimating about 3.5 million in income taxes. Uh, the debt proceeds from the role of the ban, that's the uh, Ohio market access program. That's the large ban we took out mainly for uh, the uh, construction of the Criminal Justice Center, that's paid for out of the general fund. We just renewed that, it says roll up there, but we just renewed that in 2023. Today we closed on it. We got a very favorable interest rate of 4.5% with a yield of 3.61%. In 2024, what you're seeing in the proposed budget, you know, depending on rates due, we can roll that again for another year or we can go out for permanent financing. On the right side of the chart, you'll see some of the uh, expenses out of the Hamilton Cap and Debt Fund. Uh, police cruisers, we normally budget that at $350,000. I'd say probably late summer, maybe early fall, September-ish, there were some police cruisers that came up available in Pennsylvania. We went ahead and bought those, and we reduced the 2024 budget. Uh, you know, Right now, sometimes you're waiting a long time to get the vehicle, so we just took that opportunity and did that. Uh, you'll see a fire engine that's going to be partially funded by CDBG, uh, some belt line expenses, the debt, et cetera. Uh, this is a slide that I really like. So, you know, we've really stepped it up here in Hamilton going out, getting grants. Uh, this is the, the community development block grant, CDBG funds. And if you could look at all the things, we've got fire engines, we've got fire station improvements, we've got medic units, we've got power cots. But the story since 2018, we've been able to use this federal grant to the tune of $3.3 million to fund fire station equipment, uh, engines, medic units, et cetera. Uh, Adam's going to come up and go over River's Edge. And uh, sorry, with you guys, we could do the questions at the end. Good evening, Mayor Moeller and members of council. My name is Adam Helms. I'm the director of the Resident Services Department for the city of Hamilton. I'm going to talk briefly about River's Edge. Um, as you may recall, uh, city council allocated $1.7 million uh, for the construction of a new roof and some venue improvements at River's Edge. Um, the reason why our existing canopy structure is going on 13 years old. Uh, the useful life of it was 10 to 11. And when we built it, it's a great design, but uh, speaking from experience as somebody who's had to move an entire music festival from River's Edge to Covington, Kentucky, the roof doesn't cover the stage. So it's a little bit, little bit uh, smaller than what we need. So one thing we need to pay attention to is uh, I want you to keep in mind the, the $300,000. All right, so we allocated $1.7 million for a roof. We went out, um, did some design engineering work. Uh, it's going to cost $2 million for a new roof, some concrete work, and a fence uh, around the amphitheater. Um, we did phase one. The engineering design work is complete. Uh, we hope 
to start construction in October 2024. Uh, just a reminder, we're $300,000 short on the roof and the fence. Uh, we think we have a plan for that. Uh, I told you about phase one. Phase two um, would be the con uh, construction of a box office, uh, maybe some restrooms, um, a VIP area, a multi-use and a concession stand. Um, Currently, one of the issues we have at River's Edge is we don't have a permanent liquor license. It's really difficult for us to juggle, juggle uh, to get a liquor license to sell beer during concerts. So this would alleviate that issue. Um, the approximate cost for something like that is $1 million. We have $0 allocated. Um, we are in the process of writing grants and requests to the state for um, <coughs> capital budget funding and grants. Uh, Aaron Hufford had a meeting with Representative Carruthers this week, and I believe you have a meeting set up with Senator Lang next week. So we are trying to try and push this through at the state level. Uh, what we are we put in the budget um, for the first time is we have we're asking for less than a five hundred thousand dollar annual investment in Rivers Edge. Uh, historically, the city's been spending, I would say, like s between fifty to seventy five thousand on on supplies and some personnel to do that. Uh, so what we're asking for is $150,000 for venue maintenance and supplies. Um, aside from working with the Parks Conservancy, we haven't, the city hasn't really invested into the venue um, in terms of, of upgrades or anything else. $150,000 for programming. I want to stress programming. That does not mean rock and roll bands exclusively. We do you know, live concerts and things at River's Edge. But what we are constructing is the infrastructure for a performance space. It doesn't have to be live music all the time. Um, if we have that big of a roof and that we have a great venue already, um, the programming dollars will allow us to expand our programming. I'm not just saying live performance. Um, I think we'll hear things from Plan Hamilton. Uh, a lot of the feedback we got from the communities that we want to see expanded programming you know, for teens, young adults, other things as well. Um, and then we have $185,000 for uh, salaries. Uh, those are mostly seasonal salaries. Those are to operate the venue going forward. Um, if we're going to build a stage and a, and a fence, one of the things I've heard over the years is, hey, I want to see bigger bands or bands that I actually know. Um, I would love to do those shows for free. They're not, they're not financially feasible to do those for free. So if we want to have bigger names and bigger shows, we will have to charge an admission fee. I'm not saying it has to be even market rate because we can we can move we, we do fundraising on the side, um, but we will have to charge if we want to see those. Um, we'll have to have some paid admission shows. We still continue to plan to do the free shows. Um, what you get back for less than five hundred thousand? Uh, we did twenty five total events just last year. Um, we've raised uh, one hundred fifty thousand dollars annually through private and community <laughs> partnerships. So essentially, we're asking for a match, a one to one match, um, and then we average. 30,000 attendees uh, per year dating back to 2017. The estimated economic impact of that is $1 million annually. Um, since 2017, we've done 121 events, uh, had over 175,000 attendees, and roughly $6 million in total economic impact. So if we're investing 500,000 and we're getting $1 million back into the community, like to me, if you have a, an investment that generates 100% return, I'm generally going to hang on to that investment. And that's what we're doing here. Um, last slide is, this, this is hard to see, but this is where people are coming to River's Edge uh, to see shows. We are not just regional, statewide. We're quite literally international. It's hard to see on that map. There are. I believe five or six different countries up there. Uh, we've hit every state. We've had attendees from every state in the union except for North Dakota and Hawaii. So uh, Jody Gunderson, if you're here and you know anybody from North Dakota, please send them our way. Um, but yeah, so we, we have made a huge impact. What you can't see there is um, we, we've just last year we had 10,000 people from Cincinnati, or I'm sorry, last three years we've had 10,000 people from Cincinnati and another 7,000 from Columbus. So we are reaching uh, the seas um, to come to Hamilton. River's <coughs> Edge. Good evening, Mayor, members of Council, Hamilton community. My name is Edwin Porter. I'm the Executive Director of Infrastructure for the City. I'm here today to present on the 2024 infrastructure budget. So um, quick look at the takeaways. Um, 
So 2024 budget will be um, the the utility revenues will base, be based upon weather normalized projections. Um, obviously, with our specifically our electric and gas systems, those are heavily dependent upon weather, um, which affects utility usage. Uh, we will continue to aggressively pursue grant funding opportunities. Um, our 2024 proposed budgeted O&M expenses are approximately 3.03 percent over the 2023 budget expenses. Um, we'll dig into this a little bit, but we have an additional three full-time equivalents <laughs> proposed for 2024, but I'll kind of explain a little bit behind that number. Um, we're making an emphasis in 2024 in roadway improvements, um, which includes resurfacing projects, traffic improvements, et cetera. Um, and regarding our utility rates, so um, we are currently in the process of completing a cost of service study for our natural gas and electric systems. Um, once those are evaluated, we'll have recommendations regarding the utility rates uh, for those two systems. In 2024, we plan to evaluate the rates for the stormwater system. Um, on January 1 of 24, we will implement step two of five of the five-year rate plans for water and wastewater. And in um, end of 2024, uh, we will look at the refuse and recycling contract with Rumpke. Um, so that'll, that'll expire at the end of 24, and that'll uh, be renegotiated. So taking a look at our revenue highlights, um, it's pretty hard to see uh, what's going on here, but uh, the biggest revenue is the electric, followed by the gas. Um, those are um, the biggest expenses, followed by water, wastewater, and then uh, several other <laughs> items. So out of our revenues, um, we're investing $44.2 million in the community next year. And really what that represents is um, these are proactive um, investments back into our systems to provide reliable, safe um, utility services in this community. You'll notice that in 2024, it's a little bit higher than in 2023. Um, that's because we've got a couple of large projects in there. Um, so in our water fund, we've budgeted um, just a, around $8 million for the water tower, um, which will serve the Hamilton Enterprise Park area. And then in the wastewater system, we have about eight million or nine million dollars budgeted for biosolids improvements. Um, so that's a unit process within our water reclamation facility that um, is at the end of life for a significant um, majority of the equipment. Um, I should note that um, we intend on borrowing funds for both of those projects. Um, something I did want to cover here is the 2024 resurfacing projects. Um, in the past, we've talked about program year, uh, budget year, so it might be a little bit confusing. So I, I tried to go back and look at it and say, when we say that a road's going to be paved, sometimes it means we're going to start the road and we might have underground utility improvements. Sometimes it means we're going to start uh, doing the concrete work and it won't be paved until the next year. And so we realized that some of our language may be confusing. So what you're looking at on the screen are resurfacing projects that in 2024, these streets will be repaved, okay? And so I, I wanted to, to make it clear, because I think in the past we've communicated it differently. Um, so this is from several different programs. So this is from um, our street levy funding program. This is from a general fund. This is from um, grant sources and um, a few other programs. But I just wanted to have a comprehensive list here. So. Reading through, so Front Street, Northwest Washington Boulevard, New London Road, Ridgefield Road, Meadowwood Way, Cardome Drive, Bender Avenue, Conn Avenue, Fairborn Drive, Glenway Drive, Flagler Court, West Fairway Drive, Fairway Court, Kensington Drive, and Tylersville Road. So these are all projects that next year will be actually paved um, smooth roads. So we do have several projects that we're going to start next year. And once again, due to um, several considerations, whether it's underground utilities or concrete work, um, the projects will be started in 24, but they won't necessarily be paved in 24. Some may, some may not. It's also weather dependent. And some of the uh, funding sources for these, their fiscal years uh, run June to June. And so essentially, we won't receive funding until mid-year, which delays the start of our projects, which delays the implementation of the work. Um, but reading these, uh, Williams Avenue, Fairview Avenue, Freeman Avenue, Walnut Street, Hanover Street, Hancock Avenue, Van Buren Drive, Van Buren Court, 
uh, Rutledge Court, and Holmes Court. So these are all going to be started next year. So I just want to give a comprehensive list of Capitol Street projects that will be um, um, completed or started next year. But something that we also recognize is um, the current availability of capital funding for our street is making a significant impact. But of course, it's not enough to repave every road in our community, and we acknowledge that. And we also acknowledge that although we are investing capital improvements into our streets, there are still some that are in poor condition that are not receiving capital improvements. And so what we wanted to do is find a way to address those streets. Um, so a few years ago, we refocused some of our efforts. We reduced some street sweeping activities, and we focused more on pothole filling. Um, but then we noticed that some streets, you can fill potholes all day, and it's not going to make an impact. And so for next year's budget, um, included is the purchase of a milling machine as well as a paving machine. And what we're going to do is increase our O&M budget and have our own public works crews go out and proactively repave some streets. So these streets will be ones that are in poor condition, but they're not candidates for capital investments at the time. And so we wanted to make sure that we can make a, um, an impact and improve the condition of these streets. I want to go through a couple other projects. I'm not going to read all of these, um, but I do want to point out a, a few. Um, something that wasn't on the previous list is Eaton Avenue. So Eaton Avenue um, will be repaved next year. Um, the North Hamilton Crossing feasibility and design will be completed next year. Um, we have Ross Avenue safety improvements. Um, the design work will be completed next year. Um, Ham Hamilton Enterprise Park Water Tower, we talked a little bit about that. Um, that'll be completed next year. Um, we have biosolids improvement at the wastewater plant. Um, we did in the electric fund, so we're increasing um, O&M and electric fund, the tree trimming program by a million dollars this year. Um, we have a significant amount of overhead distribution in our community, and um, a, a threat to that is obviously tree growth. And so we've recognized that this year we did have a slight uptick. I mean, we have, we have nationally low reliability. You know, we, our outage rate is nationally low, extremely high reliability in this community. But we did notice a slight uptick. And so we did a root cause analysis, and we realized that, honestly, it was trees, tree branches, fallen trees, et cetera. So we're going to invest another million dollars into tree trimming activities to, um, to correct that and to increase our reliability. Um, we also have an EV, an expansion of our EV, so um, we received a grant from OKI to install um, six DC fast charging stations in our community. Uh, so I think that this will be a great complement to our existing <clears throat> EV chargers. So we have uh, five level two chargers in our community right now, but these are DC fast chargers. And um, obviously every, every car is different in terms of EV, but these are you know, 15 minutes, you can get a significant amount of range on a uh, EV vehicle. So it's getting more comparable to filling up at a gas station as opposed to charging for several, many, many hours to get a full charge. Um, so talking about FTEs and infrastructure. Uh, so currently we sit at 275, just over that, and um, we're increasing that by um, three and a half, but only one of those FTEs is permanent. Um, that permanent position will serve our Syntrax system. Um, we've significantly increased the number of sensors that are involved in our traffic control system. And due to that, we'll have additional proactive maintenance required, as well as um, operation of that system. And we do want to continue to be able to build our own traffic signals. Um, so increasing that uh, position will allow us to continue to um, serve that system. And then the other two and a half are temporary FTEs. One of them is at the water plant. So we have uh, three retirements that are planned this year. And what we did is we wanted to plan some FTEs to have some overlapping uh, uh, time to train with our existing operators, et cetera, because uh, there are not many operators, and that's a pretty significant amount of retirements that we're looking at. And then the last one is 1.5 FTE increase. So right now we um, privately contract some uh, grass cutting, et cetera. We're going to bring that in-house and execute that in-house. And so even though it's an increase in the FTEs, we're going to net save around $30,000, which we're going to reinvest back into our uh, 
uh, street paving activities. Um, so our O&M highlights, so once again, uh, in total, just about 3% increase um, this year. So I just want to point out a couple of the highlights. Uh, we talked about street maintenance, um, obviously with the increased focus on street maintenance activities and our folks performing that work. Um, we have a 6.74 increase there. Natural gas, you'll see a decrease of 2.7%. The reason that there's a decrease is, um, as most will recall, we, we divested of the Fremont Energy Center, which was a natural gas-fired power plant at the beginning of this year. Uh, we purchased the, a portion of the gas for that facility, and we are no longer doing that. And um, because we're no longer purchasing that, there was a discount that we um, split with the plant itself, and so we're reducing um, our budget accordingly. Um, in the water, you'll see 9.41%. So um, in the water system, we've had an increase of approximately $400,000 in chemicals. I mean, that's a huge increase. Um, you know, everything's going up right now due to inflation, but we're seeing some um, pretty specific increases. Um, the one FTE we talked about for coverage, as well as um, the retirements and purchasing of some paving materials that they're going to um, execute as maintenance. Residential utility bills. So if you're looking at these two, this is last year versus this year. So the increases that are proposed um, are for the water and wastewater rate plans that are in place. What's not shown in here is any increase for um, gas or electric because we don't have the cost of service studies complete on that. Um, but the total increase is projected to be about $3.76 per month for the average resident uh, compared to last year. And something else I wanted to point out, uh, this is not a comprehensive list, but we went through and um, we took a look at the grant funds that we're receiving uh, in this community. Um, the totality of the city team, including infrastructure, planning, um, you heard Dave talking about some grants earlier. Um, we strive to identify any and all grants that we may be eligible for, and we apply for uh, regional, state, federal, et cetera, grants, because those are grants that we're bringing monies into our community, which will be invested into our community. Um, so in 2023 alone, $4.486 million in grants were received and um, applied in the infrastructure department. <clears throat> so these are grants that are actually secured. In 2024, $9.6 million in grants will be invested in, a, in the infrastructure department. And in the future years after that, because some projects are multi-year out, we have already identified $9.8 million in grants that will be invested into the infrastructure system. And we have pending applications outstanding for just under $3 million worth of grant funding. So I just thought that was really important. Um, these are the ones that are have been received for the first three um, columns there. And for every grant you receive, you apply for many others that you don't receive, and that's a lot of work that's invested from our staff, but um, clearly the results show for themselves. Um, so that's all I have for infrastructure specific, and I'll leave that open for questions for me, for Adam, for Dave. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Member Ryan. Uh, first of all, Dave, Adam, Edwin, thank you. Um, every year you guys give a uh, spectacular review of the budgets. I know it's cumbersome, so thank you and your staff for putting this together. Um, Adam, thank you for doing all the hard work at River's Edge. Really appreciate it. I know you're working really, really hard. You got a good crew, so every year is, is always better than the previous year. So we really appreciate you and all your efforts. Um, <clears throat> Edwin, I, it's really refreshing to hear that we're putting an emphasis on streets. Um, Really reviewing this year, it's it's been kind of hard to hear some of these comments coming from residents, but I'm glad you clarified a lot of uh, information. I think that was um, half the battle was some of the residents clearly just didn't understand how the process worked, especially if, you know, if we would put up, this is how many streets we're doing, this is what we're doing, but it's just concrete, but then we're going to finish it, you know, the next year. So I'm, I'm glad we're clearing that up. And I, I really hope we can continue to resurface as much as we can every year because that levy passed and we owe it to the residents to, to really perform well for them because they entrusted us with that. So um, 
Biggest thing is, great job on those grant funds. Was that 23 million, roughly? I didn't totalize it. Okay. <laughs> I yeah. will trust well, you. <laughs> that's that's money that <coughs> taxpayers didn't pay. I mean, that's that's just additional funds out outside, and I, I think that's telling that we have staff that's that forward thinking. So, um, but the biggest thing is, I'm really happy to hear Eaton Avenue and Washington Boulevard are getting resurfaced. So, yeah. Edwin, uh, Dave, thank you. Mr. Mayor. Councilmember Knapp. Uh, what we witnessed this evening was a, a presentation composite of, of the two finance meetings that we held in November. And gentlemen, ladies that, that work in all the different departments in the city, your contributions as we share are just remarkable. Uh, searching for grants, whether they're federal, state, or local grants that we can apply for. The long-term effect of those grants. Adam, you talked about it for River's Edge and uh, the, the complement of roughly 25 uh, different events through 2023 and more to come in 2024 with investment for recreation and fun things to be able to draw people from all over the country internationally when we've talked to people that are here from Europe and, and from Asia and things and they're they're here vacationing in Hamilton and come to some of our events but importantly as, as uh, Michael shared uh, resurfacing streets and if there's one thing that, that we on city council here is streets, streets, and streets again, and the importance of your team, Edwin, and then dedicating those funds, those extra funds, and allocating those when we bring things inside now, and allocating those funds back to our streets and the resurfacing program. So importantly to Dave, congratulations again on all the awards and our finance team that we're seeing and, and different opportunities that you have to explore options for us in the city and where we're going on our investment portfolio. Uh, again, when we talk about bonds, we talk about millions of dollars and we talked about those things in our finance meetings in November. And again, some of that we shared this evening, top line. We certainly welcome uh, all the information that's was was uh, shared tonight is on our website and you can go in and see exactly what was shared you can go in and rifle through it fine-tune it even more to ask and do a deep dive into any questions and we on city council uh, the administration are certainly here to answer any questions that the public may have and, and ask of us but again congratulations to all of you all of your all of your team members your staff the 650 people that keep our city ticking and make it a great place in, in the state of Ohio. Thank you. Mr. Mayor. House Member Lauer. I really appreciate all the efforts that you guys do in, in writing grants and trying to bring money in from from out from the outside. Um, Dave, you do an amazing job. I appreciate you. Um, Edwin can't say enough. I look forward to hearing what we're, I, will, I look forward to talking to you about the streets privately. Um, and also look forward to you making presentations in the future as well. Adam, I can't say enough about what you do for um, River's Edge and bringing people into it. Um, some of the things that I've watched you do and some of the things that I've joined in on some of the projects and you joined in with me. Um, I have a great deal of respect for you and your staff. and uh, I will continue to work on the ground with you whenever <coughs> necessary. Well, guys, I mean, I can't say thank you enough. Uh, the word I heard quite a few times or saw up on the screen was proactive. Uh, Edwin, you're proactive finding grants. Significant increase from last year to, to this year. The milling and paving equipment, proactive. Answering the complaints, being responsive from what we hear from our citizens. Eaton Avenue, there's probably a lot of doctors, nurses, patients. We're all very happy about Eaton Avenue being paid because we do hear from the folks who, who work there and, and live out there. Adam, uh, River's Edge is priceless. I mean, you really can't put a dollar figure on River's Edge. Uh, destination, smiles, it's, it's incredible. And um, it's the positive economic development magnet. It is a magnet over there. Uh, Dave, uh, you used the word proactive as well. Uh, streets, I mean, that's incredibly proactive. Even police cruisers, I mean, you're, 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 you're buying when we need to buy when it makes sense to buy. Um, the interest rate, I mean, that raised a few eyebrows here because that was a good interest rate that you got. I mean, you guys are, are part of a great city team and, and 
I just, I'm going to say thank you because I hope a lot of folks are watching this on TV Hamilton, read about it in the Journal News online because, you know, this is a, that's a great budget presentation. Very, very well done, and thanks for educating us. Thank you. Anyone else on council? Mr. Mayor, I got one more question. Sure. My, my apologies. Um, I, I see that we've got um, 900,000 being proposed uh, for G Street Bridge Viaduct demolition. Mm -hmm. um, I, if I recall correctly, this past March, uh, are we asking CSX to potentially help us out with that demo? I mean, are, are they going to be providing any funds? Because they have a they have a stake in this coming down too. We have asked them to okay. provide funds. We've yet to receive uh, confirmation on whether they will contribute. Okay. Edwin, the, do we have a date of when this is potentially coming down? Um, Rich Allen, do you guys know when G Street Viaduct demo, when that work may start? 25. 25. Okay. Yeah, yeah and, and that's grant funded as well. If I'm not mistaken, it's 90% grant funded. 100%. Even better. Okay. Oh, okay. okay. That sounds great. Thank you, guys. Thanks. Appreciate it. Anyone else? Great presentation, you guys. Anyone else in the audience wish to make any comment at this public hearing? Anyone in the audience? Anyone else wish to make comment? Anyone on council wish to make a comment or a motion involving this 2024 budget and appropriations ordinance? I move the public hearing be closed. Second. Motion by council member Bond. Second by council member. <coughs> All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Hearing none, that motion is carried at 740. Secretary, please read into the record the next public hearing, please. A public hearing regarding amending the Hamilton Zoning Ordinance by amending Section 1250 Zoning Land Use Chart and Section 3900 Glossary pertaining to marijuana cannabis operation, marijuana cannabis cultivation, and marijuana cannabis dispensary. New audience, this should be heard at this public hearing. And I believe we had some individuals sign the book. State your name and your address, please, sir. Uh, Logan Shreve, 614 North Dick Avenue. Um, great to see everybody tonight. Um, so in my opinion, the state has already spoken when the people came out and voted on the bill for it to be treated as alcohol. Um, that is what has been decided. I understand there's some more to that. I'm not in favor of any sort of prohibition, but understanding that certain rules need to be made in a timely fashion. The uh, the prohibition with a end date seemed like a, a good suggestion. Putting one, putting one without in this timeline seems like a disservice to the community. No one has ever looked at a big art bureaucracy or government and thought, wow, they do things quickly. I can't imagine this is going to be any different. Every council member I heard say no to a timeline to the prohibition has said that they can come back and you know, decide this later. All I feel like is a timeline would allow for the community to still be involved and hear the decision at a timely manner rather than whenever it comes down to it. All that's going to happen if we don't, you know, end the prohibition is taxes will go to another neighboring community and jobs will be lost in that area. Hamilton is at a convenient uh, position to own their own utilities, which growing and cultivation definitely is heavy dependent on. So a lot of a, uh, monetary value can come to this area if that happens. That's all I really have. Thank you for your time. Thank you. No one else in the audience wish to be heard. I've got people who signed the book, people who didn't sign the book. What's your name and your address, please? Hi, Bradley Beckham, 457 Fairview Avenue. Um, I believe we should, you know, adopt this motion and allow um, recreational use because the people have spoken, we have voted. Um, although I do not feel the issue is forthright, um, it does create an equity department in Columbus. Um, but if it keeps the fentanyl and all the black market garbage out of the city, then I'm for people. That's it. 
Thank you, Bradley. I just want to make sure that everybody knows we are not at all voting on anything to prohibit recreational use. That is not what this is about. It's about, like I said before, it's kind of like the business. <laughs> Sir, give us your name and your address, please. Hi, my name is Shay Suski, 265 North F Street. Um, I, uh, I appreciate the analogy of uncharted waters um, for the city of Hamilton on this issue. And um, my wife and I have actually been kind of swimming in these waters for the past 11 years because we've lived in the state of Colorado and the state of Washington, the first two states to legalize marijuana. And so I just thought I'd share my, our, our life experience with uh, those two states for your consideration. Um, in the Denver area, um, we uh, actually voted for the legalization in Colorado and uh, with the mind of free market and taxation and, and have those funds. Um, what we didn't expect were the secondary impacts that would happen from having all these uses um, associated with growing and processing and selling marijuana uh, throughout um, our communities. Uh, you can't ride their world-class light rail system without smelling marijuana pretty much in every time. Um, when you drive from downtown to the airport, uh, you don't smell fresh Rocky Mountain air. You smell one of two things, um, either uh, the uh, dog food plant or marijuana from all of the uh, grow operations and processing um, in that area, which is largely light industrial and warehousing. Um, and those uses have taken up some really valuable um, uh, uh, uses, um, warehousing and industrial uh, facilities. Um, and, and frankly, the, the, the amount of money that went into investments um, for the retail side really took up some really valuable spaces from a commercial standpoint uh, throughout the city. And, and I know that um, the state of Ohio is still settling on uh, how many licenses can be available, but I mean, it really felt like in Denver that there were more uh, marijuana retail locations than there were Starbucks's. Um, and then we moved to, to the state of Washington uh, to Spokane, so not even Seattle, the, the other side of the state. And it was largely the same situation, actually. Um, they have a shortage of, uh, of warehousing and light, light industrial because of the influx of grow and processing operations. Um, and then also, I learned at that point that also when you, uh, that there are testing facilities that can really impact your life when it comes to the smell of marijuanas. Um, I worked in an office building that had a testing facility in it, and it was supposed to have a world-class filtration system that would uh, prevent the smell from getting into the rest of the building, but a day didn't go by that it was impacting um, myself and my coworkers' lives uh, in that building. Um, so that was something that uh, I didn't even think of about when it comes to that, that issue. Uh, so I, I just really encourage you to, to think about all the secondary impacts. Um, sure, there is a lot of tax revenue and, and financial benefits to the, having the industry here, um, but there's a lot of secondary things, um, quality of life issues that are hard to put a dollar amount onto. And I would really encourage to look past um, sort of the carrot of, of the tax revenues and really consider the other aspects um, of allowing these, this industry in, in the city of Hamilton. Thank you. Thank you. Robert Knight, 418 Walnut Street. Take your time in making these decisions because you're taking something that's illegal and making it legal. What type of impact is going to have on our teenagers? Back in the day, I used to work for drug counseling in Butler County as an outreach worker. And what we saw of people smoking and then they went on to, to crack and other things. So, and what type of violence is going to come along with this? Look at all this. Take your time. Yeah, you, you're not denying it, but you want to make sure you take all the right steps and you're protecting the citizens of Hamilton in the long run. And that's what's most important. It's not about taxes. It's about life. So take your time and do what you need to do, okay, for, to protect these teenagers around here. And let me say this. Back in this how what drugs affect people. Back in the day, uh, one was smoking uh, marijuana. 
Then she went on to crack. And guess what? Guys made this woman have sex with a dog and videotaped it. That's how powerful the drug was. All kind, all kind of crazy things go on. And when, when marijuana becomes the number one thing, look, look, look what's going to happen. So take your time and take the right steps. You can never move too fast. You're just moving at the right speed. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Uh, Christina Landefeld. I live at 318 Ross Avenue. Um, I work for a local nonprofit that works in the prevention of substance abuse, violence, problem gambling, and um, suicides. And I really think all those things sort of come into this. So I just want to share briefly, um, we have been working with our state legislators and with other local prevention and statewide prevention agencies. So there were some recommendations that were put together um, by a group of us, and just want to share a couple of those that were shared at the state level and the ones that apply here for the city as well. So the first and foremost is that what was passed is that it's a issue two is about regulation of marijuana like alcohol. So the first and foremost recommendation is to do just that. So just to consider um, what a public or nonprofit ABC model might look like. Again, that's more of a statewide recommendation. Um, the other thing is really just to look at what evidence-based and equitable decisions can be made at the city level. Um, and those things have to do with addressing community concerns. People know, you know the city of Hamilton better than anybody at the state. So trying to see what can happen at the city level um, is gonna be the best option. Um, just another note in terms of what's happened since legalization of um, marijuana for medical use for children's um, health and safety. So there's been a surge in accidental um, children exposure and consumption since that time. And from Dayton Children's Hospital, they found there was a 14-fold <coughs> increase in accidental pediatric exposures um, since that law went into place. But I think more concerning from that is that children between the ages of zero and six um, were hospitalized with 14% admitted to the in intensive care unit. So that's what happens when kids have access to drugs in the home. So just keeping that in mind. Um, a couple of things also, um, prevention education and community prevention programs. We saw that with the passage of um, casinos and racinos. So when that law was passed, um, there was taxation that went um, pre uh, precisely to prevention programming and substance abuse programming. And so we're making those recommendations at the state level. That's something that could also be considered locally. Um, we also know we're talking about funding here. Um, effective school-based prevention programs generate $18 in savings for every dollar spent. So that's why we say prevention is a worthy cause. Um, a couple other things in terms of warning labels and advertisements. These are some things we can consider locally. Um, making sure that THC and CBD content are clearly located. Um, that warning li labels say um, that they can contain cannabis and they may be intoxicating. Um, and I think, again, most importantly for our youth, um, that there's prohibitions around advertisements that are aimed at youth. Um, that they may have therapeutic effects, anything that has sponsoring events, advertisements near prohibited facilities like schools, um, and also that um, there's prohibitions around where advertising is located, um, such as social media. So um, we did a survey of residents in 2018, and there was a clear distinction. If you were 21 years or younger, um, they had received social media advertisements around marijuana. If you were 22 or older, zero people had. So we know that, that they can be targeting. Um, and that we also have limitations around print media, billboards, et cetera. Um, last couple, um, potency. So potency is really, really important. And if we look at the potency of THC just over the last, or in about a 10 year period, 9.75% in 2009 was the average potency level. Um, in 2018, it was 14.88%. That might not sound like a whole lot, but if you think about it as ABV, so if we think about alcohol, because again, we're trying to make equations there, a beer, average beer, is about 4 or 5% alcohol, right? So if we think about a 12-ounce can of beer, 
5% alcohol. Now consider that being 40% vodka, 12, or, uh, 12 ounces, right? So if we make that comparison of the ABV, that potency is really important in terms of kids, brains, and our public health uh, generally. So um, really trying to keep in line with the state laws that are currently in place. So looking at a, co a potency cap of 70%, which is still really, really high. Um, and then the last couple of things, the host community cannabis fund. Um, we talked about what the state is looking at currently in terms of issue two and the tax um, revenue for municipalities. Um, what was recommended from the statewide agency is that local governments should not be fiscally penalized for prohibiting facilities, but instead that we're able to see um, equal taxation benefit across something similar to the opioid settlement funds that are happening. And I know that those are complicated, but something like that would show that there is equal um, revenue across the state. And then the very last thing, which is most important here, is the local government control and notification. And that's something that we've seen so go back and forth in terms of tobacco control. Um, so we know that we've had um, <laughs> lots of work that being done over about five year period here to have more local control of the vape shops in particular. Um, very grateful for all the work that's been done there. Um, so knowing that again, what works best for our community is, is what we wanna be able to put into place. Um, and just so you know, a couple of those options could be things like limiting licenses by population, um, regulating one retail license per capita, like one per 15,000, something like that. Um, and again, just really looking towards um, the alcohol industry since that is how this was proposed. So just wanted to give a couple of updates in terms of what we have shared at the state level um, and things to consider here. Thank you. <laughs> Anyone else in the audience wish to speak on this particular issue? Okay. Name, address, please. Christina Day, uh, 614 North Jake Avenue. Good evening. I just want to make a brief suggestion on the uh, on a compromise between no date date for the revisiting the subject. Is there any way? And then forgive me if I'm just ignorant on this, and it's not a possibility. But is there any way to do something like? no later than a month after the state makes their decision or puts it out publicly or put a timeline that's dependent on when the state makes their decision. Just a thought. Thought it was worth a share. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. No one else in the audience wish to be heard at this public hearing. <coughs> the record, everybody who signed the book spoke and a few others spoke. So, again, anyone else in the audience wish to be heard? Okay. Anyone on council wish to be heard at this time or wish to make any kind of a motion? Mr. Mayor. Council Member Ryan. My motion that the public hearing be closed. Second. Motion made by Council Member Ryan, seconded by Vice Mayor Pullman. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Hearing none, that motion is carried. I also make a note for the record that nobody signed the public hearing book regarding the 2024 budget and appropriations ordinance. I'll accept the motion that the uh, regular meeting be reconvened. So moved. Second. Motion made by Council Member Vaughn, seconded by Council Member Ryan. Roll call vote, please. Pullman. Yes. Fear, uh, sorry, Vaughn. Yes. Ryan. Yes. Nab. Yes. Lauer. Yes. Moeller. Yes. Motion adopted at 6 0. Okay, that was a week from being a regular meeting at 7 57. We now go to council actions pertaining to legislative items. I'll accept the motion at this time. Mr. Mayor. Council Member Nab. I move that a note be made upon the minutes that each <coughs> member of council was furnished a printed copy of each item of legislation prior to it. To its being considered in our meeting. Second. Motion by Council Member Nab, seconded by Vice Mayor Pullman. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Hearing none, that motion is carried at 758. <coughs> okay, we now go to pending legislation, agenda item number 11, second reading of emergency ordinance involving the Third Amendment to the Hamilton Indian Springs Joint Economic Development Agreement. 
An emergency ordinance authorizing the city manager to execute the third amendment to the Hamilton Indian Springs Joint Economic Development District contract with Fairfield Township of Butler County by adding area to the district territory and redistributing income tax collections from the added area and declaring an emergency second reading. Mr. Mayor. Vice Mayor Pullman. Make a motion that the ordinance be adopted. Second. Motion by Vice Mayor Pullman, second by Council Member Vaughn. Any discussion? Quick question, I think Dave, you might know this, or somebody out there. What, what's the split on those, uh, the, the Jed, that Jed's monies? How's that? 75, 25. So we, we have three different um, JED areas. One of them is a 75% Hamilton, 25% Fairfield Township. Okay. One of them um, is a 25% Hamilton, 75% Fairfield Township. Okay. And JED 3, which is uh, primarily undeveloped, which is at the southwest quadrant of Bypass 4 and 129, is a 50-50 JED. Okay. Thank you. Any discussion or comments on uh, this particular agenda item? If not, roll call vote, please. Pullman? Yes. Vaughn? Yes. Ryan? Yes. Nab? Yes. Lauer? Yes. Moeller? Yes. Or it's adopted, 6 0. We go to Gen item number 12, uh, second reading of an ordinance vacating a portion of Crawford Avenue and Mosler Avenue. An ordinance vacating a portion of Crawford Avenue located, located between South Erie Boulevard and Mosler Avenue, adjacent to 850 South. Uh, Erie Boulevard, situated in the 5th Ward, City of Hamilton, Ohio, City of Hamilton, Petitioner, second reading. Mr. Mayor. Council Member Vaughn. I move the ordinance be adopted. Second. Motion by Council Member Vaughn, second by Council Member Ryan. Any comments or discussion on this one? Hearing none, roll call vote. Pullman? Yes. Vaughn? Yes. Ryan? Yes. Nab? Yes. Lauer? Yes. Moeller. Yes. Or it's adopted, 6-0. We now go to new legislation, agenda item number 13, emergency ordinance, first reading, involving pay range for the neighborhood's coordinator classification. An emergency ordinance amending and supplementing Schedule A of the city's classification compensation plan as set forth in emergency ordinance number EOR 2022-12-126, adopted December 14, 2022, as amended from time to time by reassigning the pay range for the neighborhood's coordinator classification. First reading. Thank you. We go to agenda item number 14, first reading of an emergency ordinance involving salaries for certain employees. An emergency ordinance amending and supplementing Schedule A of the city's classification compensation plan as set forth in emergency ordinance number EOR 2022-12-126 adopted December 14, 2022 as amended from time to time relative to salaries for certain city employees and repealing existing Schedule A as set forth in said emergency ordinance. First reading. Here we go to agenda item number 15. First reading of an ordinance involving uh, our 2024 budget. An ordinance making appropriations for current expenses and other expenditures of the City of Hamilton, Ohio during the fiscal year ending December 31st, 2024. First reading. Okay. Go to agenda item number 16, which is emergency ordinance, two readings uh, following a new enactment. An emergency ordinance amending and supplementing the codified ordinances of the City of Hamilton, Ohio by enacting Chapter 723, Cultivators, Processors, and Dispensaries of Adult Use Cannabis of the Business Regulation Code to prohibit cultivators, processors, and dispensaries of adult use cannabis, first of two readings. Mr. Mayor. Council Member Pullen. Make a motion that the rules be suspended and said ordinance be read a second time by its title. Second. Motion by Council Member Pullman, seconded, excuse me. Motion by Vice Mayor Pullman, seconded by Council Member. <coughs> we'll call vote, please. Pullman? Yes. Vaughn? No. Ryan? Yes. Nab? Yes. Lauer? No. Moeller? Yes. Okay, that motion does not pass because we need six council members to vote in favor of suspending the rules for a second reading. Madam Law Director, what options do we have at this time? We, we cannot so suspend the rules per our charter. So we, we could proceed with the 
first reading of the ordinance, but we cannot do the uh, two, uh, suspend the rules for two readings. And 16, as it is written right now, is the prohibition without any kind of mandatory time, is that correct? That's correct. Do we have any options that we could look at it at this point in time with some kind of a mandatory time this evening? Yes, Mr. Mayor, those um, first have been forwarded to Mr. C uh, City Clerk for Council's consideration. Is that please? He couldn't hear what she was saying. I couldn't hear what she said. M Mr. Mayor asked the question, are there options for Council's consideration if we want to consider time frames? And I said, yes, those versions have been forwarded to Mr. City Clerk. And can they, may they be presented at this point or would you like discussion on the matter I, I don't know how that works now yeah but, but, but we uh, would like to hear I mean you said that we do have an option of voting tonight on that's prohibition with a mandatory time how many months away that we said that is correct we can actually vote on something like that tonight that is correct and we and mr. Uh, city clerk can put that on the screen for us to to look at that and agree upon that uh, for council's consideration if the if council wants to vote we would need to have um a vote that would pass to suspend um the rules uh and then have some discussion about that and then um, there would need to be a motion uh, that the ordinance be adopted so but we can have mr city clerk pull that up um mr mayor if we want mr city clerk are you pulling that up right now on the screen yes sir okay uh, I have a question. Do um, you want to direct your question towards the law director? Leticia, if we, okay, can I get this on a second reading? Then the second reading would go to the next meeting. Is that correct? We would have a second reading. This, we'd have to wait till December, what is that next week? The 13th. 13th. 13th, yes, sir. Thanks. That's correct. If, if council does not suspend the rules, um, and authorize that a second reading um, happen, uh, we would have to pass the ordinance next week. Mayor. Councilmember Nam. And Madam Law Director, again, not to interrupt, but as you're reading through charter, um, because we might not act on this tonight, and we might have been obligated because of tomorrow's legislation, and, and the need to do something for the city of Hamilton prior to the state or at the state level. Um, what is the opine on that? So as I advised in the previous um, council meeting, the safest bet, um, if the city of Hamilton um, per the city council would like to prohibit or limit, the safest bet is to do it um, by or before the effective date of the legislation, which is tomorrow. Um, the likelihood that someone's going to go, you know, and be able to get a license tomorrow is highly unlikely. And so to the extent in which city council acts next week, um, there's likely uh, no harm in that. But I have advised the preference of acting before the effective date if the desire of city council is to prohibit or limit uh, and that's why you've you've seen some of the other communities across the state um, doing the same thing just to make sure that it's it's clear um, that that prohibition um, has been enacted prior to the effective date thank you all right so specifically say we set a date at a june 2024 council meeting it's prohibited up until a june city council meeting correct Correct. So what I what I proposed um, to Mr. City Clerk is to coincide uh, the six month, nine month, and twelve month periods um, to correlate with our scheduled council meetings. And so um, I have placeholders for June 12th, 2024, uh, September 11th, 2024, and December uh, 11th of 2024, considering so that it would require action by those council meetings um, the uh, uh, looking at this, the cities who have that have already acted on this uh, the majority of them are looking 
uh, at a nine month um, period, which is, uh, you know, and the, sh the shortest I've seen is the six month, uh, longest is 12 months. So that's why I proposed those uh, three ranges, although council's pleasure can do whatever you would like. Okay, let's say it might be September sometime. Prohibited up until September of 2024. We could vote on September 24 to continue the prohibition. And, and we, we talked last meeting about if we prohibit, we kind of control the, control the potential model. <clears throat> That, would it still be possible in September that we still control the particular model? Uh, if there is a, a natural model that, that we could put into place. So the way that the legislation is drafted is, is that it would be prohibited until such date that council you know, will direct, unless council takes action prior to such date. And so council could act sooner uh, than whatever that date is. So say, for example, we pass today, uh, an ordinance that the prohibition will be on the books until September 11th, 2024. Uh, it does not prohibit council from taking an action um, on an earlier date in June 2024. But to be clear, neither does the other um, ordinance that the, the council was considering. You, you have the ability to act at any time that you want. Madam Law Director, so, so make sure I understand. understand this. So if, if, we say we're going to prohibit for nine months. We can actually come back in June and just do this earlier. Correct. Slaw director, um, if, if we decide not to go with the timeline on this, you said the chances are of somebody getting a license by next week, it has to be issued through the state anyway, correct? That's correct. And they don't really have all their um, ducks in a row right now so it's highly unlikely that somebody's going to get a uh, license by that time by next week and that's correct they have they have to be able to um, accept applications by six months from the effective date so we know um, that at least by that time but it does not prohibit them from acting earlier right we can't control what the state does and so if the state decides that they want to have those applications ready um, next week even though I think it's unlikely they could do that and we have no control over what the state does <clears throat> and I feel we're gonna have dispensaries regardless I mean I, I, I've kind of opened mind on that but we need to, as one gentleman said, that we need to take our time and do this right and get it right the first time. I, I, again, I think we're being forced into this. Um, and, and I think does it, the, the dispensaries are really the um, least end of our problem. I think the problem that we're gonna run into with our, is with our smoking ordinances that we're gonna have a lot of problems with that. People, they already break the ordinance right now and it's hard to enforce. and what's going to happen that's it that's going to be the problem we're going to run to in the future just some little thoughts um, such as one gentleman said about out in Denver so okay I just want to make sure apologize for all the questions but this is this is technical stuff so and again if, if we prohibit it with a mandatory date prohibition can continue beyond that date if we have a meeting and say you want to continue the prohibition of cultivation dispensaries uh, processors is that is that actually we could vote to continue it correct so it leaves all the same options open again basically it just gives us a date when we've got to have some kind of a revisit of this situation correct because if you don't act so say you fail to right. act by that date, then the presumption is, is that the prohibition will no longer be effective and that cultivation, processing, and dispensing will be allowed within the city of Hamilton. Madam Law Director, and then to add on to that, if there are um, licenses available, is that correct? We guess it, of, of course right if, right. if licenses are so if if a, someone were considering a business right now they would need to act within six months to apply for the ability to sell or grow 
Am I understanding that correctly? <coughs> I, I, I can't speak to, you know, because that's all dependent upon, you know, what the state is going to do with respect to, right. you know, the rules, et cetera, um, and how many licenses will be available at, at what point. I, I can't really speak uh, confidently on what the state is, is going to do within that time period. I could just speak to what's in the law is that they have to act within the six month time period of the effective date. Um, right. And we don't know what licenses will be available at, at what juncture. Correct. Thank you. Other questions? Questions? Is there an opportunity to propose an option to this tonight? Yeah, I think what would be helpful if, if Mr. City Clerk can pull up the, um, the red line versions of the, the two different ordinances so council can see um, what I'm talking about in black and white. Um, if you can just make that as big as you can so we can focus in on the language. So, can you make it a little bit bigger? Okay. Yeah, I'm good with that. So what you, what you see, um, uh, in the paragraph uh, that's on the screen is it's just making clear in one of the whereas paragraphs that this is for a limited period of time. Um, Daniel, if you can go uh, to the section um, that's the attachment. Can you zoom in on that a little bit? So as you can see on, on the screen, uh, instead of there being uh, a blanket prohibition of uh, cultivators, processors, and dispensaries, uh, it inserts language to say that until, and then your pleasure as to what date you want to select, uh, and these are again consistent with our council meetings um, already scheduled. And then it says it'll be prohibited until that date unless further amended by city council prior to such date. And then it's the same uh, for permits, et cetera. And I've made that same edit in our zoning ordinance as well. So the word amended up there implies change. Correct. But could there also be no change and we have a hearing our meeting and we say we want the prohibition to continue that's not really amendment that's like keeping the, the prohibition on is that the amendment almost implies a change i mean maybe i'm reading it the wrong way the, the amendment is is meaning that you're going to have to come back and do something uh with this with this language which yeah. with the date that we choose correct but there could actually be we, we come back and we say i'm not sure what the what it would be like, but there could be a situation where this, we decide to continue the prohibition. Correct, and then at such time that we would revise the language we just used to just strike out until such date, that date, and then we would continue on with the prohibition. So that would be an amendment to that language. That would be an amendment. Correct. And if you can see on the screen, I've, I've made that same edit for our zoning uh, ordinance, inserting a date to say, okay, you, you pick the date. Um, council um, and the zoning ordinance edit will be on the books until such date. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. That's Member Lauer. Um, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna say this um, in respect to what Mr. Knight had to say, and in respect to Christina, uh, what she had to say. And I should, but I plan to vote no on this legislation as it is presented. The ordinance bans cultivations, processes, and dispensaries in the city of Hamilton with no sunset or provision for future discussion of the matter. A date. Um, I believe that hey, the prohibition. You need to get your microphone closer to me. I believe that the prohibition subverts the will of the voters in the state of Ohio as well as in the city of Hamilton. Um, I believe that this is a matter that must be acted upon quickly. Um, but I also prefer that we work diligently to get this 
to where it provides regulation as well as proper studies. Um, I'd like to see it go before um, ordinance review eventually. I, I can vote on a date, but I would want it um, quickly um, at the earliest um, within the state. Six months um, is acceptable, but um, I also I, I think that we can get regulations as well as studies done in that time frame to make this um, beneficial for the city of Hamilton while also making sure that our young people and some of the things that Christina had talked about um, with prohibition advertisements and stuff, I think we could get that stuff in within six months. So, but, but as it's written now, my vote is no. As that's written up there? No, as the one before, as mm -hmm. the one that was presented, the original one. We put a time frame on it, and it's with, we're one of the first to act on this. I'm good with it. However, I am not, I am not good with if it's it without a deadline. Mr. Mayor. Ask Mayor Vaughn. I would like to propose that we have an amendment to the ordinance that has been presented to um, set the date of June the 12th, 2024 for reconsideration. As someone who spent my career uh, working in alcohol and drug education, uh, I understand the serious consequences of this. I believe this is an opportunity for us to regulate, for us to do all of the right things around this drug, the use of marijuana. It's there. Uh, it is not going away. And I believe there are benefits to us having the ability to regulate rather than just say no. And I believe just say no doesn't work. I believe that having the opportunity to engage, educate, and comply with the laws, accountability, is important. I believe that the city can do that. We have done it with alcohol. I wouldn't have thought 20 years ago that I would see regulations that allowed us to walk down the streets drinking alcohol. Um, I would go to other states and see it and say, this, this is wrong. And actually, it's not. It's very regulated. I think our law enforcement would tell us that it has been a good thing for us. Do people abuse? Yes. Are there ways we can address that? Yes. And I truly believe that we have that ability here as leaders in the city of Hamilton to help regulate and do this in the right way. So I would make that amendment. So you agree that we should control our own destiny in this? Absolutely. Mr. Mayor, Mr. I would I would second Susan's proposal. I mentioned in my comments earlier a business plan, and I feel it's incumbent on the city. It gives us six months to be able to come up with a, a devised plan, something that is stair-stepped and it's on purpose. Uh, as, Susan ta as Susan talked and as Madam, Madam Law Director talked, our, our ordinance and zoning uh, will not allow for proliferation of dispensaries. They, don't, they will be controlled, they'll be in, in an environment uh, that, that we decide. And as we've done with DORA, as we've done with other successful ventures in our city for the past 12, 13 years, uh, we promise that the, the, our, our youth will be protected. Uh, we've listened well to what Mr. Knight shared, uh, what Ms. Ladalada Field shared. Uh, I think it's a proposal that we can live within the boundaries. We also understand, as I mentioned in my earlier comments, the state is still very fluid on this. Uh, they, they closed their assembly this evening at 7 o'clock. They're going to come back and vote again tomorrow. We don't know what that vote will look like, but it certainly gives us the time to be able to put a, a, a proper plan together, and I believe six months is an opportunity for us to be able to look at a plan and come up with the right solution on this. Thank you. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Mayor Pullman. I mean, we've got a first and a second, is that correct? Is this done right. properly or not? So, I mean, we're, we're right now we're just having discussion, discussion under, the, uh, okay. on, under the item. We would need to have a motion to suspend the rules uh, and that said ordinance be read um, a second time by its title because that previously failed um, and so then we would need to have a motion that the ordinance be adopted as revised uh, with the June 12th 2024 date 
if that is the pleasure of council. I would like to make that motion. Oh, well, I, I, had a, I had a comment. Okay, there. so we got it. Okay. I, Do we have to? Maybe we should have your question first before we see whether or not anybody's going to vote to suspend. What's as, your question? As much as I don't like a timeline on this, and I don't think it really matters, I, I, um, I think the only support I would have on it is one year. I will give into that, but one year is... Um, it, it, we have to we have to do again we have to do this right and i don't think you know six months we need the time to discuss this we need um the, i don't think we're um we're asking much to take a year i think okay if everybody thinks we're asking a lot to make it a permanent ban i mean again i think and i think i believe that we will jump right on this project and go but i think we need the year I, don't, I think there's, um, it takes a lot of time for Ohio to get things together. It takes a lot of things to go through a city. We know how that goes. And let's just get this right. And so uh, it's, a, it's a year. We, we're going to I, I still believe we're going to have dispensaries. I, I don't, I, I know we're going to have them. I'm not against that part of it. I, I, I want to know where they're going to go and I want to make sure we get this right. We want to make sure I don't want them on Main Street and a High Street. I've said that. But I want, we need a good plan on this. And this is not a plan. This is dumped on us. And this is not a good, it, we need to set down a good plan to have plenty, ample time to talk about this. Yes. And that's where I'm at with it. So, I mean, I will bend for a year, but that's it. Let me ask a question. <laughs> yes. Madam Law Director, say it was June, whatever date that was, uh, 2024. Could we vote in June to six more months of a prohibition Absolutely. then review it yes. in december absolutely and in december of 2024 we'd have all the same options that we have tonight correct prohibition some restriction this or that we got all the same right we would have that even if we do continue it from june 12th to another date in december mm -hmm. correct And we need five to be able to vote on this the second reading. Six. Yes. Six. 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 We need five to pass the ordinance. All right. Any other comments from anybody? Mr. Mayor. Councilmember Ryan. It's the sworn duty of this council to be cognizant of what our residents and business owners and community volunteers feel about issues. It's also our sworn duty to make decisions not on passion, but on facts regarding present and future possibilities. And that also includes being receptive, but responsible for the voters. Last election, Hamilton voters said yes to marijuana, and this council hears that, including me. However, previously stated the state is adding changing and still deciding how they want this implemented will our schools and students safety be in jeopardy will our voters be unhappy with yet untold state requirements for growing selling and using i don't feel comfortable right now but with this new proposal for june 12th i'm willing to accept that to prohibit until june 12th once the state clearly defines the path forward, I would like to reconsider lifting this prohibition either before June 12th or later if we have to, but it's strictly based upon what the state of Ohio is going to do. Thank you. So, we're, so what we could possibly do is, is do the June 12th, see how things go up to June the 12th, and continue it again if we have to, if nobody's I'll tell you right now, the opioid settlement is going on two years. And that thing is about as close to being ready. Um, so, I mean, everybody seems to be kind of the, the, the June 12th, and then look at on or around June 12th, whatever that date is in, in six months. Is it, is it June 12th? June 12th. <coughs> okay. Yeah. Mr. Mayor, one more, th one more thought as we move sure. forward with this. Uh, Madam Law Director, Mr. City Manager, would it be appropriate for council to 
to form a committee of council to move this strategically forward with a plan, as I mentioned, and as our one on council concurs, is that at the purview of, of council or is it more on the administration? Yeah, Mr. Mayor, if I may, I, I think it's going to be hard for us to determine um, what the committee would decide without the rules from the state. Mm -hmm. um, okay. And so I, I think it would be good to see what the, the rules are from the state and then um, convene to have further conversation. Of course, we can talk about the law as it is now, but um, to, to uh, Vice Mayor Ryan's point, things are, are shifting um, daily on, on this matter, uh, sometimes by the hour. Um, and so I, I think we would be kind of chasing a moving target if we convene to meet on right now. I, I believe it's important to know that all seven of us who serve on council, uh, as all of you are witnessing, are, are very, very committed to making sure that this moves forward expediently, but on purpose and, and by design, uh, and that we would come up with a plan. So our administration needs to know uh, your council firmly believes that, that we can move forward strategically with this plan. Thank you. Thanks. Okay, so I think we've all got a date and a plan. Date and a plan. So uh, is there a motion to yes. suspend the uh, rules? Mr. Mayor. House Mayor Vaughn. I move that the rules be suspended and said ordinance be read a second time by its title. As amended. As amended. Is that correct? Second that motion. Okay. Motion made by Councilmember Bond. Second by Councilmember Nab. Roll call on that motion. Pullman? No. Vaughn? Yes. Ryan? Yes. Nab? Yes. Lauer? Yes. Moeller? Yes. Okay, we that motion still fails. We need six members to adopt that motion. All right. <clears throat> so I, I guess we'll just... Mr. Mayor. Hey. Madam Mayor Ryan. Madam Law Director, is, is there a possibility we can just table this till next week? I mean, we have no choice. Yeah, we we well, we, we have to. I, I will say it, it would be. Um, it sounds like there is some level of you know consensus. I know I, I heard what um, Vice Mayor um, Elect Pullman you know stated in terms of preferring one year, but I, I to the, but it does sound like there is consensus that we do want to prohibit as we sit here today, mm -hmm. um, and I think it would be. Um, in the best interest of the city of Hamilton to see if we have some level of prohibition passed today versus um, having nothing. But if, if we want to table this until next meeting, um, that we'll, we'll have to well, do Well, sounds that. like it should be on next meeting's agenda. Okay. Period. All right. But isn't this, if we did the one reading and it doesn't pass on this, um, well, it just can't pass on that, so we can't, we do two readings next week? Emergency, it could be emergency next week. Emer it'll be an emergency in okay. two, two readings. All right. Mr. Mayor. House Member Vaughn. Can I just say, and in all respect, um, Vice Mayor-elect Pullman, you understand that the six-month ban does not guarantee it moves forward in June. I got that. Okay. Yes. And the state is currently working on policy policies, I guess, in regard to this. There are many other states that have done this. Um, and I just, I hope that you understand that this is certainly not a push through. Six months gives a lot of time. I feel we're in a dangerous situation if we let this go. And we do not act on this. Council member, excuse me, law director. Um, you mentioned last week when you spoke, or the last council meeting when you spoke, that there was importance of having this decided December 6th instead of a later date. You still feel strongly about that? 
I think it's the most it's the most conservative approach to the extent and we want to put a prohibition on the books it, because we don't have certainty about what the state does. The, from a practical perspective, we don't think that people are going to be able to get licenses on the seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth, eleventh, twelfth, or thirteenth. Um, and so, but it do, but the law is set to be effective tomorrow, uh, which is why I wanted council to try to act. Um, so that we can have something on the books by the effective date. And this is a cleaner way to do it on December 6th instead of December 13th. Correct. Madam Law Director, if we were to <coughs> remove the dates, just take the dates and just go back to what we originally proposed. I mean, it's, we can still lift this at any point. We just don't need to put a date on it. I'll say it's the same thing we've been talking that about. Yes. That is that is correct, but so, we had objections to that, so I think we're yeah, trying to yeah, figure out what okay. the happy medium could be, and I'm not, not sure if we're going to get get there tonight. I, I mean, again, I, I understand, Susan. I respect you a bunch. I mean, it's but I understand this, but I just don't see why we're looking at dates anyway. It's we we have these options. We we've, we've got an option starting. We vote on it tonight. We got an option tomorrow to start working on this, and I think we should start working on this. Mm -hmm. Again, I say we're going to have dispensaries in this town. I understand that. We're, I'm not against that. I, I know they're going to show up. We just need to control them the way it's got to go. I think we all agree with that. And why we have to put a date on here and say that we're not urgent about it, I think everybody's going to jump on this. Um, I, I mean, I, I want to jump on this tomorrow if we can. But I just hate, you know, being stuck on a timeline when you've got to deal with the state and everything that you know they're not making good decisions on there. We're going to make, I, I think City of Hamilton, this council, will make a good decision. I really do. I believe in that. I believe in all you guys on there. Uh, unfortunately, Carla's not here tonight. I wish she was in this discussion, too. It would be fair to her. But, you know, it, I, I just don't understand why we have to worry about timeline. And it, it's just, it doesn't, it's not going to. Do you think it put a timeline on it's going to, um, by or not put a timeline on it's not going to push us? I mean, is that what you're afraid of? By voting no, means that I do not support the vo voters of this community. The voters have spoken. I think it's incumbent upon the leadership here to investigate, to set the regulations, the rules. And in the end, we may come back with, no, we can't support that. But for right now, I am not, no. I'm not a blanket no, because I believe and respect what the voters have done. And I believe in six months, we can start considering it. It may take a year or two years in the end, but I believe six months is very fair. And that has been proven to be the case in many other states where six months to a year, year and a half before it's fully vetted. And I, I truly believe it's incumbent on us to vet this to its fullest. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Mayor Lauer. I believe that a timeline holds us accountable. Mm -hmm. I believe we owe that to our voters. Um, I, you know, I support what our voters say. Uh, I just want us to be held accountable. <clears throat> so. Timeline's important. Go back and visit this. Timeline to, to vote on something tonight. That timeline has some significance to it if we vote on something tonight and pass something tonight. Is that correct? Correct. The effective date is December 7th, 2023. So the preference is to have something on the books if we want to prohibit or limit to do that. And it gives us control if we do it before it goes into effect. So knowing that there's a timeline somewhere down the road a ways, but also knowing that we control our own destiny by having some kind of a passage of some legislation tonight, that beginning part of the timeline, so to speak, is important too. Yes. All right, so you can, you can reread this and pass it tonight, is what you're saying. If I'm sorry, repeat that. <clears throat> We can reread this and pass it if I decide uh, I, I'm going to agree with this timeline. I don't agree with the timeline, but I, we need to, if we got, I'm listening to what Letitia is saying. I'll just make it clear. I, I don't agree with the timeline, okay? But I'm listening to what Letitia is saying about getting this thing passed. Susan, I definitely respect 
uh, what you said there, I, I, you know, I respect it 100%. Um, I, it, it is against my heart to do this, okay? I'm just going to tell you, it's, it's really against me to do this. Um, I just, if something in my mind just says we're, we're being, it's not going to work out the way we do. But if it's to, to end this subject and you want to reread this thing, I'll go with this, the, uh, un reluctantly, I, I will go with that, okay? So it's up to council. Your motion? Yes, um, I move that the rules be suspended and said ordinance be read a second time by its title and as amended with the date of June 12th, 2024 for reconsideration. And I second, second that motion. Okay, so procedurally, Madam Law Director, are we doing this the right way? Correct, we're gonna do a roll call vote on the motion to suspend okay. the rules. Motion made by Council Member Vaughn, seconded by Council Member Nab. Roll call on that motion to suspend the rules. Read a second time. Pullman? Yes. Vaughn? Yes. Ryan? Yes. Nab? Yes. Lauer? Yes. Moeller? Yes. Motion adopted, 6-0. Second, reading of the emergency ordinance. An emergency ordinance amending and supplementing the codified ordinances of the City of Hamilton, Ohio by enacting Chapter 723 Cultivators, Processors, and Dispensaries of Adult Use Cannabis of the Business Regulation Code to prohibit cultivators, processors, and dispensaries of adult use cannabis. Second reading. And then the, the motion would be um, that the ordinance be adopted as revised with the June 12, 2024 date. Okay. Um, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Vaughn. I move the rules be suspended and said ordinance be read a second time by its title as amended with the date of June 12th. So we, we want to have a motion uh, that the ordinance be adopted as revised with the June 12, okay. 2024 oh, date. Oh, okay. So the motion be adopted with the uh, revised date of June 12th, 2024. Thank you. Second. Motion by Council Member Vaughn. Second by Council Member Nam. Roll call vote on that motion, please. Pullman? Yes. Vaughn? Yes. Ryan? Yes. Nab? Yes. Lauer? Yes. Moeller? Yes. Ordinance adopted, 6-0. We now go to agenda item number 17. Uh, two readings of emergency ordinance and two readings of emergency ordinance. It, I mean, that's I where mean, I thought we were. And does that date have to be amended? Yes. Yeah, so, um, in the version that uh, Mr. City Clerk has, we, we already have that date. So we can just do a motion to uh, suspend the rules. Um, and then you would make a similar motion that you made to the last one uh, that the ordinance be adopted as revised with the June 12, 2024 date. Okay. Mr. Mayor, oh, you want to read, read that in? <laughs> I guess I'm trying to move us along. Sorry. No. An emergency ordinance amending the City of Hamilton, Ohio zoning ordinance by amending Section 1250 zoning land use chart and Section 3900 glossary pertaining to marijuana cannabis operation, marijuana cannabis cultivation, and marijuana cannabis dispensary. First reading. Mr. Mayor. I move that the rules be suspended and said ordinance be read a second time by its title. Second. Motion by Council Member Vaughn, second by Council Member Nab. Okay, roll call vote on a motion to suspend and read the ordinance a second time. Pullman? Yes. Vaughn? Yes. Ryan? Yes. Nab? Yes. Lauer? Yes. Moeller? Yes. Motion adopted, 6 0. A second reading of that emergency ordinance, please. An emergency ordinance amending the City of Hamilton, Ohio zoning ordinance by amending Section 1250 zoning land use chart and Section 3900 glossary pertaining to marijuana cannabis operation, marijuana cannabis cultivation, and marijuana can cannabis dispensary. Second reading. Mr. Mayor. House Member Vaughn. I move the ordinance be adopted. Second. Second. Motion by Council Member Vaughn. Second by Council Member Nab. Any discussion on this amended? Emergency ordinance. Any other comments about this? <clears throat> okay, roll call vote. Uh, Mayor, before we do that, I want to make sure that this is the ordinance that with the amended date for June 12, 2024. Are we clear on that motion before we proceed with the roll call vote? 
Yes. Okay, that's the intent of the motion. Mm -hmm. We have a first and a second. Um, okay, I will move from there. Okay, Pullman. Yes. Vaughn. <clears throat> yes. Ryan. Yes. Nab. Yes. Lauer. Yes. Moeller. Yes. Or it's adopted, 6 0. Okay, we now go to agenda item number 18, first reading of an ordinance involving employment agreement with the city manager. An ordinance approving the terms and conditions set forth in the city manager employment agreement with the city manager and authorizing and directing all council members to execute said agreement first reading. Okay. We go to agenda item number 19. First reading of the ordinance. Following some improvements. An emergency ordinance declaring the improvement to certain parcels in the city of Hamilton to be a public purpose and exempt from taxation pursuant to section 5709.40B of the Ohio Revised Code, providing for the collection and deposit of service payments and specifying the purposes for which those service payments may be expended and declaring an emergency first reading. Okay, thank you. We go to agenda item number 20. First reading of emergency ordinance involving a CRA agreement with PLK Hamilton. An emergency ordinance authorizing a real property tax abatement within the city community reinvestment area for the purpose of encourage, encouraging economic development within the area and authorizing and directing the city manager to execute a community reinvestment area agreement with PLK Hamilton 1 LLC for a property located at 12 Water Cove Drive and declaring an emergency first reading. Thank you. We go to agenda item number 21, two relief emergency ordinance involving uh, Butler County Port Authority. An emergency ordinance to join the Butler County Port Authority and declaring an emergency first of two readings. Mr. Mayor. Council Member, uh, Council Member, Vaughn, Council, Council Member Ryan, I know who you are. <laughs> I've that. I've known you for years and years. Uh, <clears throat> make a motion that the rules be suspended and the said ordinance be read a second time by its title. Second. second. Motion by Council Member Ryan, second by Council Member Lauer. Roll call vote on that motion, please. Pullman? Yes. Vaughn? Yes. Ryan? Yes. Nab? Yes. Lauer? Yes. Moeller? Yes. Motion adopted, 6 0. Okay. Um, second reading of the emergency ordinance, please. In, an emergency ordinance to join the Butler County Port Authority and declare an emergency second reading. Mayor. Council Member Ryan. Move that the ordinance be adopted. Second. Motion by Councilmember Ryan. Second by Councilmember Lauer. Mr. You, Mayor, please. may I ask a question? I was going to ask. Oh. City Manager Smith, you want to make any comments? Yes. Thanks. Yes. Yeah, so the ordinance that, um, that you're voting to make it very clear. Uh, it's the first step for the City of Hamilton to establish its own separate port authority. Uh, by Ohio Revised Code, we would have to join the existing Butler County Port Authority. And that's all that uh, this first um, piece of legislation is doing. Uh, once a uh, city declares um, their intent to join the Butler County Port Authority, then there will be a resolution in front of the Butler, Butler County um, commissioners. I believe I was told today it should be on uh, December 22nd. They would consider that resolution on December 22nd. Assuming that they would approve that resolution, then the next resolution would go to the Butler County Port Authority itself which has a meeting uh, the third Tuesday of January. So my assumption is it will be on that agenda. Assuming that they approve it, then it comes back to City Council for the final piece of legislation, which would actually create the Port Authority, determine the number of members on the Board of Directors, who shall be appointed to the Port Authority. Then if Council would approve that piece of legislation, then the Port Authority for the City of Hamilton would become official. Question, Councilmember Vaughn. No, that's exactly what I wanted so, to know. <laughs> path is us, the Port Authority Board of Butler County, Butler County Commissioners, then back to us. Um, the commissioners first. Okay. The Port Authority, Butler County Port Authority, would be said, after that. I thought you said the opposite. Yeah, no. So December twenty second, it would be the Butler County Board of Commissioners. Okay. All right. No other questions or comments. Roll call vote on that. Motion, please. Pullman? Yes. Vaughn? Yes. Ryan? Yes. Nab? Yes. Lauer? Yes. Moeller? Yes. Or it's adopted, 6 0. Go to agenda item number 22, which is a resolution involving a mural underneath the High Main Bridge. 
A resolution authorizing and directing the city manager to execute a maintenance agreement with the Ohio Department of Transportation, ODOT, relative to the installation and maintenance of a mural underneath the High Main Bridge, City of Hamilton, applicant. Mr. Mayor. Councilmember Vaughn. I move the resolution be adopted. Second. Motion by Councilmember Vaughn, second by Councilmember Ryan. Any discussion or comments on this resolution? We'll call. Pullman? Yes. Vaughn? Yes. Ryan? Yes. Nab? Yes. Lauer? Yes. Moeller? Yes. Resolution adopted, 6 0. We go to agenda item number 23, which is a resolution um, requesting the auditor advance taxes assessed and collected. A resolution requesting that the Butler County Auditor advance to the City Treasurer of the City of Hamilton, Ohio, taxes assessed and collected for and on behalf of the City of Hamilton, Ohio, 2023 through 2024. Mr. Mayor. Council Member Ryan. I move that the resolution be adopted. Second. Motion by Council Member Ryan, second by Council Member Nab. Discussion, comments, questions on this one? Hearing none, roll call vote, please. Pullman? Yes. Vaughn? Yes. Ryan? Yes. Nab? Yes. Lauer? Yes. Moeller? Yes. Resolution adopted, 6 0. Audience of the City Manager? Uh, I have nothing, thank you. Audience of City Council? Mr. Mayor, I will make this quick. Um, last, yesterday evening, uh, the State of Ohio received some fantastic news from the FRA. Our Amtrak expansion plans are being funded. All four corridors that the state has applied for has been awarded. What's special about this is that two of the corridors run through our town. That's the Cardinal route and the proposed 3C and D route. Both of these corridors have received funding, uh, $500,000 each. Um, I can't tell you how excited I, I am. Um, you know, we've been working on this crazy idea to bring Amtrak and passenger rail back to Hamilton for over three years. And Mr. Mayor, we, we talked to some students about it. Good. Councilman Nab, you know, you were there. Our, our Hamilton City School District students sent over 400 <coughs> letters to Governor DeWine telling him, consider this. This is, this is about our future. So moving ahead, this is a significant day in, in Hamilton. This means that we are with arm's reach to get passenger rail back in Hamilton. This is going to be great for our city. This is going to create another gateway to our town. It's going to create jobs, economic development uh, opportunities for us. And this is, this is huge to get people to come to Hamilton. This is going to help grow us. So uh, here in the next few days, uh, passenger rail folks are moving quickly. I got a phone call Saturday morning that's going to give us um, path forward of, of what we need to do so uh, council i just really want to tell all of you my colleagues thank you for embracing this um the, this initiative it, it's it's been fun i'm excited and um i'm gonna fight like hell to keep going we got a lot of work to do but we have not taken a step back we have only been going forward so uh thank you to our infrastructure guys and and jody um they've been all over this too so um looking forward to continuing this and um Brighter days are definitely ahead in Hamilton. Thank you. Thank you for your efforts on this and your successes on this. Anyone else on council? Mr. Mayor, very quick. We were featured, Hamilton was last night on cable TV. I don't know how many people saw it on the Magnolia Network. They featured Hamilton and the building of a barn. And there were great shots of Hamilton. Also did a tour of Pyramid Hill. Um, German Village, the Lane Hooven House, even though the barn was a little north of Hamilton, Hamilton got all the credit. So it was a really good show with a lot of features and great comments about Hamilton. So made me proud. Anyone else? Last month we named some streets in our town as well as the bike trail after citizens who have made an impact on our city. Uh, Dave Ballou sent us a uh, card saying, Dear Joshua and City Council, I am both honored and humbled by the bike trail designation. I love the bike trail and I love Hamilton. I'll tell you what, we all owe a lot to Dave Ballou. So um, he's a great guy. He sends cards, hand writes them. That's, that's his mm -hmm. style. And it was an honor for all of us to name that bike trail after Dave Ballou. All right. I know there's a request to go and see, excuse me, a request to go in executive session. Is that correct? 
Yes, sir. Uh, for three different items. The first is to consider confidential information related to the marketing plans or personal financial statements of an applicant for economic development assistance. The second is to consider the appointment promotion of a public employee. And the third is to consider the purchase of property for public purposes if premature disclosure of information would give an unfair competitive or bargaining advantage to a person whose personal private interest is adverse to the general public interest. Okay. Regarding the request involving uh, number one on the list of uh, uh, how we want to do the session, is there a motion to the session is necessary to protect the interest of the applicant on a possible investment or expenditure of public funds to be made in connection with the economic development project? So moved. Second. Motion by Council Member Nab, seconded by Vice Mayor elect Pullman. Roll call vote. Pullman? Yes. Vaughn? Yes. Ryan? Yes. Nab? Yes. Lauer? Yes. Moeller? Yes. Motion adopted, 6 0. So that's at 8 54. Is there a motion to cancel the executive session for the stated purposes given by the city manager? So moved. Second. Made by Vice Mayor elect Pullman, seconded by Council Member Ryan. Roll call vote on that, please. Pullman? Yes. Vaughn? Yes. Ryan? Yes. Nab? Yes. Lauer? Yes. Moeller? Yes. Motion adopted, 6 0. 854. We're going to go in executive session. We'll come out just to adjourn the meeting. No more public business. Thank you.